You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Good morning. Great to be with you this morning on Bassmaster Live for the St. Croix Bassmaster Opens. The Open at Lake Washita in the state of Arkansas. Live coverage by Maxim. It's presented by Seven. We are looking very much forward to this third day of three days of angling here. We started out with 199 pros. And we are down to 10 on this day. Let's take you to Arkansas in the first time in 20, more than 20 years, for a Bassmaster event at this place, the biggest lake inside the state of Arkansas. That is Lake Washita on the Washita River. About 40,000 acres and a, a, a big challenge, about 1,000 miles of shoreline, and it's going to be a lot of fun today. Again, this is the third day championship Saturday out there for our 10 anglers who are left in the mix, and there they are right there. That is their weight to start the day. Two Arkansans on top, Jeremiah Kendi with a pound plus advantage over Matt Baker. Uh, Andrew Hargrove of Texas, Logan Johnson from Alabama, Christian Ostrander all the way from California, Evan Kung from Ontario, Canada, Andy Newcomb from Missouri, uh, Lake of the Ozarks, Paul Marks from Georgia, Zach Gutrema from also the state of New York, and Blake Schroeder from Texas, a good diverse lineup here. I think we've got a big day ahead of us, a lot of fun watching the goings on here at this very, very interesting body of water, Lake Washita. Welcome to the Bassmaster Studios here, it's presented by Spon Sponsored by Marathon. I'm Tommy Sanders here, and I want to introduce our special guest today, providing the analysis, Stetson Blaylock. Stetson Blaylock about to start his eighth season as an elite, elite uh, angler, and also fishing your fifth. Congratulations on that Bassmaster Classic. That's coming up as well. But the main reason you're here is because we're on your home lake. Yeah, and uh, a lot of people's asked me why I'm not fishing this tournament, and uh, there's there's no real reason other than I just wanted to start the Elite Series season off with a clear mind, uh, not having three tournaments back to back to back. And Washita's hard to win on. Uh, it's a lake that's very, uh, it changes every day. It changes by the minute a lot of times. I feel confident there, but uh, for me, I've got bigger things in mind, and uh, the Elite Series is right around the corner. Well, 10 guys are very, very happy that you made that decision. <laughs> We're happy that you did, too, because we get you here. But uh, Ronnie Moore also with us, and Ronnie, you've been spending some time down at the lake this week. Man, it's been a tale of two days in totally opposite weather. On Thursday, day one of this event, I could have got a suntan. It was around 70 degrees, sunny and calm all day long. And then day two, the storms think came in cloudy, a little bit colder, and then the wind really Really kicked up the last three hours of the day right around when weigh-in started at 3 o'clock blowing all through the night so we'll see what what lake we wake up to today but I'll say the x-factor deal is today we had a 914 big bass weighed in on day one and we had a 10 pound 14 ounce big bass weighed in yesterday with the top 10 all being separated by only four pounds it's anyone's game you could be oh, out of it in the last cast of the day you could win this tournament. Yeah, that's what we're looking forward to. Very much so today. Such, Mike Sukon is with us as well. He delivers the daily limit to us on an almost daily basis. You have been spending time at the lake. Oh, also. yeah. Riley, we had a 25 degree drop in temperature from the start of the way into the end of it. But out on the water, guys said that really ignited the fish. They caught a lot of their fish in the last couple hours. Stetson, were you kind of surprised that you saw such big bass, the 10 14 coming out of Lake Awachita? Yeah, you just don't see that many giant bass. I know they're in there, um, and I've caught a few really nice fish, some seven and eight pounders, but it's that time of year. You know, anytime you get that that early pre-spawn, those fish are feeding up, getting ready to uh, to make their move. And so, yeah, a 10 pounder, yes, but big fish, no, it's full of big ones. Big, big dynamic potential out there today. Very much looking forward to it. We're gonna show you some of our weigh-in from it yesterday when we got our top 10. Zach, Zach Gutrema from New York with the almost 11 pound bass. That is remarkable. It was absolutely crazy. That, the, the deal is, is you see these guys who have 19, 20, 21 pound bags, but you have to evaluate what's in that bag. For Zach's 22 pound bag, half of it was one fish. Same thing for Evan Kung on day one. We'll keep an eye on those who are really consistent, like Andy Newcomb, who has kind of brought in similar weights each day, just like Matt Baker has as well. There's Evan Kung from Canada right there. He's having a great season, that is for sure. Got a Delta guy, Christian Ostrander. Ishman Rowe knows him real well. Logan Johnson, if you remember the days of Alabama college fishing, he is one to keep note of. And Andrew Hargrove, the last four opens dating back to last year and this year, he has been on fire as well. Absolutely on a roll. We got some top performers of, of the year in our top 10 here. There is Matt Baker in second place, and your leader there, Jeremiah Kendi from Benton, Arkansas. Familiar sounding place there, I think, mm -hmm. to some of us here. <laughs> Let's take a look at our young hummingbird lay of the lake right now. And there it is, as we say, 40,000 acres, the first impoundment on the Washtenaw River as it flows down 
out of the upper Washita Mountains here. And, uh, very, very interesting place. About a 70-year-old impoundment. It's a great, great uh, destination for boaters and vacationers. And a really, uh, although the Bassmasters have not been here since 20, 20, uh, 2002, it is a great fishing and a tournament destination as well. One thing, Stetson, that you can speak to, 40,000 acres, but now with Lake Washita, fish is much bigger. With the technology we have, there's a lot of deep open water that was unfishable in the past years. Now anglers can probe that water. Yeah, and I, I would step out and say that that lake is actually three lakes. You can break that place down in three different fisheries, in my opinion. You've got the three rivers on the west end. You've got uh, the lower end by the dam, what I call that, the clear end. And then you've got that, that sweet section, which is the middle section for me. Everybody said leading up to this tournament, very hard to, to put two days exactly alike together here. I think if you look at the leaderboard, you see consistency lacked, but this has the recipe. Lake Washita does standing timber, submerged vegetation, rock. You got 45 degree banks. You can go get the colored water uh, up the rivers like Stetson was talking about, especially when we've had all these rains that we've had. And then obviously you've maybe got some brush, you know, shoreline brush and, and brush piles to fish as well in that intermediate depth range as well. Most of our anglers have talked about having a dirty water and a clear water plant for this lake here. We got our anglers awaiting takeoff, supposed to take place in just a few minutes right here from the, uh, the Brady Mountain facility there, the recreation area. Let's leave here from our leader. How are you feeling this morning, Jeremiah? Uh, pretty pumped up. I've, uh, I've put in right here probably, I don't know, thousand something times, you know, in my life. So. I'm looking forward to it. Another day on Washita. Jeremiah Kendi, as you mentioned, Ronnie has not fished a, 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 a Bassmaster event since 2002, but that was right here. He's he's been keeping himself busy, pro fishing though in the in the interim for sure. Stetson, you said you knew him. He seemed pretty calm, cool, collected at weigh-in, but it is a little emotional when you launch at a place you've launched it a thousand times, but now. There's a possible class, classic berth on the line and $50,000. Yeah, and, and Jeremiah, he's, that, that's Jeremiah right there. You're not going to see anything different from, from him all day long. I, I know exactly what's going through his mind. He knows exactly what's, what's about to take place. This lake changes so much. He knows that he has to go out there and do exactly what he's been doing, and that's being consistent, upper teens, catch a good bag, and hope somebody from behind doesn't come, come through with another 8, 9, 10-pound bass. Again, he uh, claimed he didn't have a fish yesterday until noon. That'll kind of wear your nerves down a little bit, won't it? He said he called out four fish when that wind hit in the last hour. What I love about Lake Washita is that you can, you're going to see multiple types of fishing today. You're going to see guys electronics based, fishing offshore, maybe some live scope in there, obviously. And then you're going to see just straight up fishing, chatter baits, crank baits, spinner baits, things like that as well. I shot a Paul Marks there from Cumming, Georgia, Lake Lanier guy, having a fantastic season. Yeah. So far, good outing All at Lake right. Okeechobee. He's our EQ points leader. If it were to end today, he would be joining Stetson Blaylock on the Elite Series, but we do know we've got not only today, we've got <laughs> seven more events after this to get it done. Our EQ is Elite Qualifying. The hopefuls to make it onto the very top level of Bassmaster Fishing, the Bassmaster Elite Series, and they have to fish all nine events in order to make that happen. And, and the vast majority of our 199 pros were part of that program when we started two days ago. We couldn't have had a better start to our season, Lake Okeechobee, a little bit warmer than it is right now, but the big bass, they all have shown up in the first couple events, and we've seen some guys show consistency. That guy right there, Andy Newcomb, jumped in Lake of the Ozarks, his home lake last year, notched a top 10, and said, you know what, in 2024, I want to fish all nine and try to make the Elite Series, and got off to a top 20 finish at Okeechobee, and now sitting in the top 10. He'll be one to keep an eye on all year long. He has proven it at every step of the way for local, regional, and now on his path to a national spotlight. Stetson, on the Elite Series, everywhere the Bassmasters fish, we have big lakes that fish small, we have small lakes that fish big. Where would you put uh, Washita on that list? So Washita fish is pretty big, in my opinion, because you can you can go up the river, dirty water, you can stay in that middle section, and you can go to that, that south end. And what, what allows for that is you've got deep, clear water, you've got shallow, dirty water, rocks, trees, things like that, but you've also got uh, a lot of vegetation, a lot of standing timber out in out into 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 feet of water, so those fish can go a lot of different places. 
Jeremiah Kendi, he's got a little bit of pressure on him here. There's always pressure mm -hmm. on the hometown guy to perform, to, to put one away here, but he has certainly laid the groundwork for uh, coming away with a victory here, but uh, that's a long time from now. We've got a full day of fishing ahead, these fellows. They've actually moved the launch around to get out of the wind. There's this persistent north wind yes. blowing there at the lake, so we want a good, safe takeoff, so we'll do that. While we wait, let's take a look at the first open. I think there's a lot of excitement on that one, Ronnie Moore. Yeah, we've been to Lake Okeechobee so many different times, but this was the first time since 1991 that we had taken out of Clewiston, Florida. And if you think of Clewiston, Florida, and you don't know anything else about it, you know that that is the home of the Martin family. Roland Martin, Scott Martin, that is where they have put their roots down. And Scott Martin being able to win on his home lake in front of his family at the marina with his dad's name on it. That was something mm -hmm. sentimental. And to do it in record-breaking fashion, it was a great week to start the Bassmaster season. Just one fish at a time, baby. Just one fish at a time. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, gosh, dude, I got her. I got her, bro. She's the monster, dude. We got to see a lot of fireworks there, Tommy. Lake Okeechobee's changed over the years, vegetation-wise, water level-wise. That's a big concern, and, and Scott Martin's been at the forefront of trying to improve and keep that lake what it is. It's a legendary body of water. On day one, we got to see him break the record for a single day weight in a Bassmaster Open competition, 33 plus pounds. And then he didn't really slouch off the rest of the week, 25 and then another 31 for a 90 pound, six ounce, three day total break in the all time three day BASS record. And why don't we just say it? He won by 21 plus pounds. That's the second most all time and most for a three day event, uh, the winning margin wise. You can't, you can't, uh, he ran out of records to break. This is <laughs> actually what happened. We thought he was going to hit a century mark for a while there yeah. with three days fishing. I mean, in an hour time period, Stetson, he caught a two, almost yeah. nine pounders, then he caught a seven, and we were like, why don't you just catch a 10 or a 12 Absolutely. and cull out your last three pounder and make, break 100 pounds? He told me he big item a little bit. They had dropped about a pound, pound and a half of eggs, so he only came in with 31 seven, is which it. is fifth in the opens list top oh. five weights That's it. Scott said it took a lot of patience that was his watchword throughout the entire thing keeping his head down not moving around much keeping it in that area that was the key place right there Harney pump and yeah you fished here Stetson and you know that when you get in an area where there's fish there may be a bunch of anglers but you just need to you don't need to pull your trolling motor up and run a whole bunch you need to stay there he was around 50 or 60 anglers all week long until that final day we got to see five different areas at Okeechobee Tommy five areas with two anglers a piece on that final day including the Rim Canal South Bay Harney Pond was where it got done Scott Martin punched his ticket to the Bassmaster Classic next year, which we just announced. So now he knows. Yes, that's where right. we're he knows where we're going. Well, there's one more look at our leaderboard. Before we get underway here, the takeoff is just around the corner. Two Arkansans on top looking to stay up there. Jeremiah Kendi and Matt Baker. Andrew Hargrove of Texas. Logan Johnson from Alabama. California's Christian Ostrander. Evan Kung, Kung from Canada. Nukem, Mark, Scutramo. We'll see them all in action today. The takeoff is coming up next. The next generation of St. Croix Mojo Bass and Mojo Bass Glass deliver breakthrough levels of comfort and control. Based on anthropometric data, radical new trigon handle and dynamics real seat designs conform the rod to the angler, not the other way around. While 34 dialed in casting and spinning models support cutting edge presentations from BFS to eight ounce swim baits. So go ahead, find your mojo and unlock your bionic superpowers. I'll be your beast of burden, an ally in enemy territory, overgrown, nasty, unkind. Throw me in and watch me swim. Mother Nature may be tough, I'm tougher. I'll take you where chaos is the cost of entry, where the fish are worth the fight. If you ask me, the bigger the question marks, the better the quest. Forged from the harshest environments, Dakota lithium batteries are built to endure. Engineered with lithium iron phosphate, they give you twice the runtime at half the weight, last five times longer, and provide exceptional lifetime value. Let's go! Backed by an 11-year warranty, they keep you on the water from sunup to sundown. Go further. Last longer. Play harder. When you go rogue,
Rogue. A top 20 playlist doesn't set the mood. You do. Rogue nicotine pouches. Great taste. No compromises. Go Rogue. The St. Croix Bassmaster Open at Lake Washita, presented by Seven, is sponsored by Ranger Boats, by Rapala, and by Yamaha. All set to get underway here on Lake Washita, here in Western Arkansas Championship Saturday. Want to show you some incredible footage from yesterday, day number two. Zach Gutramont. New York there with a 10 go. pound Holy 14 moly. ouncer. Listen to this 10 pounds at 14 ounces, almost an 11 pounder. It was honestly crazy. I had about six pounds at about noon and then uh, dropped on that one and it came up honestly quick and then took me down to the timber. It's a miracle I even got the thing back out of there. Pound line? Eight pound line. Holy moly, they got you in the wood and everything? Oh, yeah, yeah. What a thrill. Man. I mean, from Lake Washita, us Arkansas <laughs> folks go, wow, now that is something. I was walking sure. down the dock and said, Zach, you catch him today? And said, yeah, I got like 22 pounds. And I said, that is fantastic. He said, I think I got like an 11 pounder. And I was like, well, you lead with the 11 pounder. Let me know you have the 11 pounder first. And the weigh in kind of turned up from there. It was rumblings, and everyone wanted to come see a 10 14 out of Lake Washita. Zach Gutramo starting this day in ninth place out of our 10 anglers out there today. Starting in third place, one of our two Texas anglers, that is Andrew Hardgrove. I'm, I'm fired up, man. It's championship Saturday. Um, sitting in third place, about three pounds behind the leader. Um, had some weather come in yesterday afternoon, so I'm excited. Anything can happen. This is one of them days that anybody has a shot to win. I mean, the guys that have been catching them, might not and guys that just barely squeaked in could have a really big day today so super excited it's anybody's game tommy i'll tell you i'll tell you andrew hargrove is a little inaccurate this week he broke his scale in practice so he hasn't been weighing his bag so he's been about two pounds lighter he's about two pounds light on his deficit as well he's only a pound and a half behind so andrew don't be so negative. You're right there, one and a half pounds out of the lead. The perfect setup. It is. Absolutely, no doubt about it. Andrew Hargro got some momentum going, too. Finished last year with a fifth place at top five at uh, the Harris Chain. So uh, good, good on him and a good start as well. A good uh, solid finish down at Lake Okeechobee. So we will have our eyes on Andrew Hargro throughout the course of this day. Again, we have 10 anglers ready to go. All but two of them. The top two are EQs, or elite qualifying hopefuls. So it's a very, very important day for them in order to keep their season on track. You've got to finish in the top nine if you want to make it to the Bassmaster Elite Series. This is live at takeoff time, and we are just about there. In fact, we've got some boats going right now. They did pop around from where the takeoff was supposed to be around to the other side of the point where it's much more protected from the wind. So it does sound like those who wanted wind suits will get wind today as we count down single you know to his seconds before takeoff. 
Hey, Stetson, the game and fish was there. They took fin clips or they, they took a little sample of those two big bass to check. They've been stocking Florida strain largemouth in Washington since 2008, like 100,000 every other year, and they want to check if, the, if their efforts are working. They were smiling, so they think they are. Oh, wow. Fourth place, Alabama with 33-4. Logan Johnson. Zach Gutramon. <coughs> Zach from New York State, from across the border in Canada. We've also got Evan Kung, so we have an international element in our top 10 today. And Stetson, we talk about going from 200 boats to 10 boats. Is that a huge advantage? Is that going to open up some things? It will, yeah. it's. I know for sure the guys like Jeremiah that are wanting to run around and fish a lot of different places. And, and, and those guys know so much about the lake that having more open water is really going to play into their, fact, uh, into their hand. And I can tell you right now, that one right there wants the wind. I know what he's doing and uh, the way he's fishing. And, and that lake just sets up for the wind makes those big ones get up there and bite. That was the key thing in his interview yesterday. He is not fishing a spot, Tommy. He is fishing a pattern. Rarely do we see pattern fishing at times, but because he is a local, history can hurt you. But with Jeremiah having so many places to fish, he's been able to duplicate this and at least run and hit some spots to either salvage a limit or, hey, this looks exactly like another place. I'm going to go and try to duplicate that. We are underway now, and it won't be too long before uh, the anglers who are starting close will be set up and getting ready to produce something on this day. Maybe something that will put them on top, get them into the World Championship, the Bassmaster Classic, if they can engineer a win. It is cold out there this morning. It is, it is about 30 degrees at the start of the day. Going to be a persistent north wind as well, but not, not too heavy today, not like it was yesterday at, at the weigh-in time. It got to... You could get plenty of fresh air at the weigh-in yesterday. That's a look at Lake Washita. Actually, the leader in our EQ points coming into uh, the second event yep. of the season here. Uh, because Scott Martin is not part of that already sure. in the Elite Series, it uh, reverted to second place. Tucker Smith, one of the most decorated high school and college anglers of all time and had a terrific tournament at Lake Okeechobee. Yeah, I saw his father in the weigh-in parking lot yesterday and, and said, I'm almost getting tired of saying that he's the most decorated youth angler in Bassmaster history, but three high school championships, a college championship this year. He's been team of the year. He won a million dollar tournament in this part of the country, and he had a good solid finish uh, this week at Washita to stay in the mix because of his second place finish at Lake Okeechobee. He got up to a great start. And honestly, Stetson, you can do this. You can find your style of fishing at almost any lake in the country. And they did that. They found some biting fish in the rim canal, a lot less pressured fish as well. Yeah, and, I, and I, I've known Tucker for a long time as well. And, and he reminds me so much of a young version of myself and the way he fishes and the style of things that he does and, and getting away from the crowds and trying to find his own thing. And uh, I, he's got a very, very bright future ahead of him for sure. We were commenting all through our coverage there that he, he acts like he's been there before. Yes. Because he has. He's yes. won so many times. He's been, the, he's been in the boat more times at the Bassmaster Classic, but he hasn't fished it because back in the day he was the first one as a high school champion with, uh, you know, with Academy and whatnot to lead the boats out, lead the yeah. Classic Anglers out. And he's been so close. Three times he's had the chance to make the Bassmaster Classic, and he has finished second in all of those. Okeechobee and two College Classic brackets. It's only a matter of time until we see Tucker Smith at the Bassmaster Classic. Again, Tucker was second place at Okeechobee. Watch out. Randall Tharp, former elite uh, angler, was in second place, so uh, good on him. Had a little more jump. difficulty here at uh, Washita. Really weird to see them in second and third, 21 to 22 pounds behind the winning weight, but they both averaged 23 pounds a day <laughs> at Okeechobee. They had a great, great week. Tucker Smith finished 33rd here this week. He kind of knocked down about sixth in the uh, EQ points.
Tucker Smith and Easton, Easton Fothergill, who yes. met in the, the classic bracket championship this past year, were both in our top ten. And Easton just missed it by one slot. Yes, he almost went back-to-back to back top tens for him. Paul Marks is the only one who did make a top ten at Okeechobee and is in the top ten this week. That's the kind of thing we talked about. If you finished in the 90s or 100 or 110, you're wondering, do I still have a shot to make the Elite Series? The deal, the deal when you're looking at the points race is how many anglers, not at the top, but how many have finished in the top 50 after the first two events? Because when you have 20 to 25 anglers who've done that, that's a lot of people who have high point totals. As we start to go through each event, you'll start to have that narrow down and see who really starts to pull away. But so far, we have a good grouping of 20 or so that have done that, top 50 in both events. All right, we understand that uh Two of our anglers have found their spot. They are set up, ready to go. That is second place Matt Baker from Glenwood, Arkansas, about 30 minutes down the road from Lake Washita. He says though Lake Washita is not his home lake, so I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to figure out what might be. Went to school in Russellville, maybe it's starting now. I, I'm pretty sure Lake Greason is oh, Greason. his home okay. lake. Yeah, I, I think he spends a lot of time there. Guides a good bit, doesn't he? Yeah. I think so, yeah. 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 Like Greece and on the this, Little Missouri River. This part of the country has been putting out some giant fish. We've seen a 914 and a 1014 this week. We also have seen an 11 and a 12 pounder at DeGray, which is right down the street. As we see Jeremiah Kendi hooked up already. Had a schedule. That did not take long. Mm. Wow. Oh, no. <laughs> huh? Let's go. Look at it. Let's go. Oh, my God. <sighs> I guess I did want that trap after I dropped my rod. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, Lord. Mm-mm-mm. I didn't want to jinx myself, so I didn't even clear my scales yesterday. What you'll see from Jeremiah today is being able to change up areas that he's been fishing the rest of the tournament with the wind blowing out of the north. If they had a south wind or no wind at all, he's going to really rotate through places that the winds pushing in, especially early this morning, because a lot of people don't know this, but Lake Washita, this bite picks up after 10 o'clock. It's been that way my entire life, and I think you'll see him with this shot early. He's gonna do well. 335 ain't bad to start the day. There you go. Got to consider that's a bonus fish. And, mm. as, uh, Jeremiah did not have anything in the live well at noon <laughs> yesterday. So, exactly. Wow, what a, not good news for the rest of the field, but plenty of time and plenty of opportunities for the rest of our anglers to catch up. Again, we have 10 anglers out there today. Very important day, championship day. First time at Lake Washita for the Bass Masters in a long, long time. And what a start to championship Saturday. Our SV spool design is made with one thing in mind, casting control. Whether it is casting lightweight baits, skipping, pitching, or casting into the wind, the Tatula SV reels virtually eliminate backlashes when set properly. Now with our groundbreaking technology and innovations, backlashes can be a thing of the past. Out here, it takes a certain type. The type who's always the first one out. The type who knows deep down everyone else is just fishing for second. Enter the Apex Series. See more fish. Seize more victories. Settle for nothing less. With unrivaled clarity, it's the top fish finder for the most demanding type of angler. Only from Hummingbird. Every day, we live to serve you. On the farm, our tires work as hard as you do, ensuring a bountiful harvest. We empower your discovery beneath the surface. We stand tall with you to conquer temple. 
We maximize efficiency in an interconnected world. We help you build the foundation of tomorrow. No matter the job, we know that your success is our success. Because at Maxim Tire, we get the job done. When you go rogue, you make your own fun. No matter what it looks like. Rogue nicotine pouches. Long lasting, great tasting. Go rogue. Next weekend on FS1. The best anglers in the world compete at the highest level. It's the Bassmaster Elite Series. Live from Toledo Bend. Next Saturday and Sunday morning on FS1. Today on FS1, the future stars are back with roaring engines and grueling nonstop action. See who claims the first checkered flag of the season today at 5 Eastern on FS1. Some Xfinity Series racing on the way today. Biggest, uh, some would say the biggest weekend for racing of the year. Going on down in Daytona. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to what may transpire today. There Big you. things happening already. Our tournament leader, Jeremiah Kendi, this was moments ago. Oh, no. Maybe a little bit of a forgotten <laughs> bait. We forgot the spinner bait a few years ago. The Look lipless has been forgotten, but with that submerged vegetation, that could be the ticket today for him. It's been the ticket for him this week so far. Jeremiah Kendi stretching his lead out just a little bit. Your second place, Matt Baker. Well, the plan this morning is to early hit as many of these good rocky points shallow as I can. I, you know, a lot of times on this lake, well, most of the time, I think they feed at night. So a lot of them will get really shallow early. And then, I mean, if it, the wind stays up all day, they'll stay up there all day. But if it slacks off this afternoon, I'll have to fish my bait a little deeper probably. But that's what I'm trying to do this morning, take advantage of the early bite. And I took advantage of it a while ago, I caught a three something. Decent start. <laughs> I'll take that after I kicked my rod in the lake as soon as I got to my first stop. But that made up for it. You notice he didn't go very far I'm either. He's the right there by takeoff. To the next 10 cast, I think. And you said you you know that cast. <laughs> oh yeah, that yeah, that, right. that area he's fishing there. When you have a north wind blowing in there this time of year, it's it's a very very productive area. We looked at the color of that lipless. Well, tell tell us about the main forage the there. The point, the it's got rock all over well, it. I, I feel like crawfish for That's one, but I feel like a lot the of these fish are feeding on bluegill. Oh. You'll see them on your on your graph up there, uh, real shallow this time of year, and swimming in the top of the grass. But definitely crawfish, bluegill. Uh, they're, and they're fish feeding on shad out deeper also, but the crawfish right now are, are what he's keying on this morning up on those rocky points, no question. He's had a week of first. I was down at the docks. He was the first guy to check in on day one. Of course, he had 19 pounds, seven ounces, and then he leads after 
day two is first first fish today he just hopes it holds out for the rest of the day oh, he fouled my trap up dad gummy not slack in it i can tell you right now if if, if this holds up and this works those boys have a long day ahead of him because he knows enough places to do this all day and nobody has more confidence on Lake Washita than this guy right here. Jeremiah is not competing in the uh, elite qualifying competition here, but uh, if he wins, should he win, it's a long ways away. Qualifies for the classic. To qualify for the classic, he'll have to fish the other two you know, in his division. Yes, yeah, Logan Martin but in I'm not May and June at Ufalo. I don't want that kind of world. What he just said right there, he told me he's not trying to make the elites. He does. He has no desire to fish for a living again. He he's been down that road, as he says. And uh, hats off to the guys that are doing it because that is a dead gun battle. And he knows all about it. He knows what we go through day in, day out, and uh, he just wants to win this tournament. And uh, you hear it all the time, but it's really start. true. These guys can catch them. It was just amazed me the first day of this tournament what they caught, and the places they found in practice. <laughs> I just couldn't believe it. It took my whole life to find, and they spent a couple of days and find it all. But I have yet to see anybody fishing exactly the way. We're fishing these little bitty isolated rock deals and little grass clumps. You'll and I notice think that's all because of. You'll notice the other three guys here deep. on the four box are are all looking down that's at their graph, and he is the one guy that's not doing that. And that forward sonar, we've all talked about it, but this place right here is one of those where. Even for myself, it'd be tough to not be doing that because there's so many fish out there swimming on bait and in the timber and on the edges of the grass. And, and Jeremiah's good at that also, but he also knows what the capabilities are of just focusing on getting that bait up there on those little rock points and making the exact cast that he needs to make. Lake Washita is about angles when you're fishing up there shallow, the grass edges on those little points. He's not just throwing that bait up there and winding it back. He's working those points and that grass at specific angles to get his bait right in the strike zone. And those guys have done it for so long that they do it by feel. You know, a lot of these younger guys, myself included, we like to look at our graph screen and see what those what that screen's telling us, where the edges are and things like that. But a lot of those guys are casting that bait up there. They're reeling it down the edges and feeling it, you know, making multiple casts to get the bait right in the 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 strike zone. And praying that someone doesn't cut down their favorite tree that they've used for years to triangulate it. Or if I line up right here on the buoy and I look at that tree, that's the that's the edge of the grass. But Grass does grow differently every year, depending on freezes. So at Washita, have you been there early this year to see what the grass has been like? I know there's the areas to the west in the clearer areas, there there was more grass at times. Sure. But up the lake as well, there's some grass. Yeah, there's a lot more grass this year than, than I can remember, but it's not created equally. Uh, I can tell you right now that there's areas that are, are more productive than others, and for me, uh, he, he's right in the in the correct area and, and he knows exactly where to be and when to be there. So if, if those fish are, are doing what they should do, uh, he'll get some more bites. But I'm anxious to see how these other guys that are that are not too far behind weight wise can can make adjustments from what they've been doing on this particular lake because I myself know how tough it can be to change up to go do what you need to do to, to get that win, not just to be competitive, but to, to break into that top spot, chasing two locals that know the lake so well. I'm curious to see if, if we can have somebody from that you know middle of the pack come up and, and make some good decisions and catch a big fish. Well, Jeremiah Kendi. As you say, he's got he's definitely got a plan in mind. He's got something mapped out. Of course, the X factor is the possibility of a giant. Evan Kung, nine pounds plus on day number mm. one. That can sort of scramble things up a little bit. 
Sometimes they eat it, sometimes they don't. Just about putting it in front of as many fish as you can in a day. Hopefully a couple of the bigger ones bite. It was the talk of the tournament on day one with that 914 Stetson. He actually had it wrapped around the timber and had to go over it and work it, work it out and work it up and got it in. Wow. You'll see right there, he's sitting in 70 feet of water basically, but a lot of those fish it, and, and forward sonar has really changed my perspective on those deep fish. That, those fish can be in 70 feet and be in, swim right up to five feet that fast. And it's amazing to see how there's no, there, there's no longer a, you're fishing too deep. That doesn't exist anymore because those fish will get out there and move in and out really quickly. And uh, there, there's no water, in my opinion, that, that's uh, not productive anymore. Being able to see exactly what's going on down there really helps and uh, makes you more efficient for sure. I've heard other anglers Stetson talk about how they can see the fish react to their bait and they know it's going to bite or not. Do you find that the case? Yeah, especially this time of year. Uh, you can kind of, once, once you get the bait down there to those fish, you'll see how once they, I think what you're seeing when you say react to it is you're seeing when they actually see that the bait's coming down. When they first realize that, hey, there's something that looks like a shad falling on my head, that's what you see is the initial uh, time when they realize what's going on. And then yes, there'll be times where those fish will immediately what I call is they turn up for it. They immediately, they're swimming along here and all of a sudden they turn straight straight up towards the sun and swim straight to your bait. And I'm sure that's what a lot of guys are seeing and I'm sure we'll get to see that some today. Evan Kung here from Pickering, Ontario. He's 24 years old. He had a great term, Okeechobee, 17th place. And had a 14th at the Open at St. Lawrence last year. So this, he, he knows how to Make moves in tournaments, that's he, for sure. He said that he uh, has fished around Cooper Gallant and the Johnston brothers in that portion. Because you could be from Canada and you could be uh, uh, 30 hours away. Right. So he is in the area where he's fished against those guys. And he said he, uh, you know, he, he really wasn't expecting a bunch last year fishing. And that's probably to his detriment this year. He had more in, intense goals of, of achieving in the first two events. He's obviously done very well for Evan Kong. But I will say, and we've talked about the forward sonar is very popular. It's helpful, especially fishing over 70 feet of water, things that we wouldn't have done before or would have taken a lot more time to do. He, he hit on a piece of standing timber, his transducer on day one and had to come in early. He was a late flight and he came in, he was one of the first people in. Uh, so that's another deal is if your pattern is solely dependent on that, you know how to read 2D. So some people will have to adjust if they just, if something happens or you gotta hope you fix it quick. Yeah, but the, the problem is, is even for myself, when I, when I was 10, 11, 12, the first three or four boats that I had, of course, it just had 2D sonar on the front. And I've caught a, a million bass off 2D sonar, but uh, the forward sonar makes it easier. And uh, without that, it can be a struggle, even for myself. Well, let's take a look at our unofficial leaderboard by a bass track. Jeremiah Kennedy started the day with a pound uh, two ounce lead and now he has stretched that out to a four pound and a half lead. Over second place, Matt Baker, two Arkansans still at the top of our leaderboard. Andrew Hargrove, Logan Johnson and Christian Ostrander rounding out our top five and we are just getting started on Lake Washita. We'll be right back. The next generation of St. Croix Mojo Bass and Mojo Bass Glass deliver breakthrough levels of comfort and control. Based on anthropometric data, radical new trigon handle and dynamics real seat designs conform the rod to the angler, not the other way around. While 34 dialed in casting and spinning models support cutting edge presentations from BFS to eight ounce swim baits. So go ahead, find your mojo and unlock your bionic superpowers. You're here for the hook set, 
and nothing else. Because the battle between you and the bass should always be front and center. And now that the best trolling motors ever made are even better, we'll lead the charge. So you can focus on getting them to bite whenever and wherever the fight takes you. With Minn Kota, you're free to fish on any front. Forged from the harshest environments, Dakota lithium batteries are built to endure. Engineered with lithium iron phosphate, they give you twice the runtime at half the weight, last five times longer, and provide exceptional lifetime value. Let's go! Backed by an 11-year warranty, they keep you on the water from sunup to sundown. Go further, last longer, play harder. When you go rogue, a top 20 playlist doesn't set the mood. You do. Rogue nicotine pouches, great taste. No compromises. Go rogue. Hey there anglers, I'm Fox Weathers Craig Herrera and here's today's Bassmaster Open final forecast looking at weather out on Lake Washita in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Boy, look at that mix of sun and clouds, temperatures right into the mid 40s. Here's something to watch though, winds though at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. So be safe out there and have a good time. Be a little tricky casting. Lake temperatures in the mid to upper 40s. Remember, you can download the Fox Weather app or stream Fox Weather from your favorite connected TV device. Thank you so much, Craig Herrera and everyone at Fox Weather, keeping us surprised at what's going on here. A little bit different weather each and every day. Sunny, as you said, boating weather on day one. Oh, it Ryan was. Moore. It was like uh, just sunny and bright and one of those traditionally tough fishing days. And everybody expected the, the next day with the clouds and, and wind would be a lot. But it really didn't pan out to be a bonanza, did it, Stetson? No, I don't think so. I, I feel like uh, I feel like the changing conditions are, are really what's making this tournament interesting and I, I don't know if you noticed that but on the on the shot where it shows where everybody's fishing you'll you'll notice that there's a, a big Not group of guys in the top 10 in that Two middle quarters. section of the lake mm -hmm. Paul Marks I noticed he's over there south on that what I call the east end the clear end he's the only guy down there Lake Lanier guy dad's one of the best of all time there Two and a quarter. Two and a quarter, and he's on the board with only the top 10 being separated by four pounds to start the day, Tommy. A two and a quarter is a good start for an angler, and he got a good start to his open season. He's fished an open here or there, Lake Hartwell, when it's come around the Georgia, South Carolina region, but he decided to fish all nine this year. He's actually roommates and friends with Tucker Smith, and they both made top 10s at Okeechobee, and he is here in the top 10 once again. He's our points leader for the EQ points race. Absolutely. Great, great start to the year for Paul Marks. 
He was a factor each and every day. I mean, he was he was solid all the way through our Oka, Okeechobee event. Definitely great with his forward sonar, but we'll get to learn a little bit more about Paul Marks this year. You can see these anglers who go on a hot stretch and two events in a row, two top tens. We'll see who go to Santee Cooper next and see if he can do it. It's uh, it's just like a, one of the main creeks, and then this is just a ditch, but it's got two two ditches coming into it, a big point in the middle, and it's just full of timber in here, giant giant timber nearly comes up to the surface. Paul being from around the Lake Lanier area, that no area that he's fish fishing sets up today, exactly like Lake dry. Lanier in a lot of ways and I'm sure he feels right at home right there and, and you know he's got that area all to himself from the top 10 here today it looks like and uh, he's one to watch no question about it there's a lot of big fish that live in that area first keeper went in at two and a quarter that was a good start to his day there we go let's start In our live yeah. leaderboard. I like keep track of every day I go fish. I keep track of all the all the big ones I catch. I've got them for the past like three years. I've been doing that. I'm trying to keep the water off my eyelet so it won't freeze too bad. There was two on live scope that time and they just rocket shipped at it. That's what he's talking about. He said they rocket ship towards his bait. That's that's what I call they, they turn up for it. As soon as they see it, they just turn straight vertical and just come straight to not it. Moving too fast. Seems like the ones that are moving really fast are stripes. Ones that are kind of not really sitting still but barely moving through these trees and it's, it's kind of weird the spotted bass there's a lot in here too they're up really high the largemouth are down there 25 to 40 feet it's kind of kind of strange you'd think they'd be the ones up up close to the surface but it's the spotted bass A lot of the water temps this week were ranging in the 48 degree mark as we started day one, got up as high as 53 to 55 in most areas. But you gotta remember that's probably the top four or five feet. You know, when you jump in the water off a dock, your feet are much colder than your, than your chest is. And so those fish aren't necessarily changing a whole bunch from uh, a warm day versus a cold day. It's the sustained and what it's been. And I guess also amount of daylight we have, amount of sun penetration will really get the fish the moving more so. Yeah, Kendi was telling me that the fish, when they start staging here, they usually don't move back on a cold front or anything like that. They're kind of going to stay in that uh, position. Right, and I, and I think there's two two groups of fish. I think you have those deep fish, fish on Washita, like and then you have those grass fish on Washita, and those grass fish, they the live depth, in that 15 feet and shallower most of the way. winter. That one disappeared. Probably chased a bait fish or something somewhere. Marks is 22. He's going to leave here as our EQ points leader. Not Stetson live anymore. Of the nine guys last year who advanced from the EQs to cool. the elites, only two of them were lower than 40th after the mm -hmm. first event. And JT Tompkins was the 40th guy, and he, of course, had all those top tens at the end and jumped up to win it. But Kyle Patrick was 72nd, I believe, in the points after the first event, and he had some good tournaments to climb up and, and finally did it at the end. But you got to have a hot start. A lot of guys I wrote a, wrote a note that uh, they weren't lower than 22nd. Right. Yeah, it, it's all about momentum and, and keeping a right mind. And if you start off, you know, the first couple of events with a low finish, it just gets in your head that you know, update. these guys are going to catch them. Um, it's cold. Um, it's windy. Um, I ain't got bite yet, but it's championship Saturday. Anything can happen, man. So I don't know. I think I think I'll be around some fish today. Uh, it's just getting them to bite. So we'll see what happens. I don't know. 
anything could happen today. But with that many tournaments left on the schedule, a lot of these guys, even if they do have a low finish, they have that opportunity to get in whatever their wheelhouse tournaments are and make a run back up to qualify just because you can have a, a low finish or two, I'm going to guess, still with, with that many events and still be able to fish your way back in. It makes it harder, but uh, it's, it's definitely doable. Yeah, well, Tyler Williams, he had an up so, and down uh, season. He'd have a top 10 a and then flat near 100. And to my right, and there's some points, some points that go way out in the main lake. And uh, I've been catching most of my fish just on those points and stuff. Sometimes um, they'll be up on the, on the edge of the grass um, where it drops off. And then, um, but my better fish really have kind of been out off the points of, um, in like 25, 30 foot of water, pretty deep. So um, I don't know, maybe this cold will push some out so I can see them a little bit better, but we'll see what happens. I don't know. You're just picking up with us. We are at Lake Washita, state of Arkansas, and this is the uh, this is the St. Croix, Croix Bassmaster Open Series right here, the main pathway uh, for this uh, anglers in this great and, and very tough, toughly competitive series to make it to the Bassmaster Elite Series, which is the top level, and that's where all of these guys are engaged, except for our top two anglers who are locals who are doing very well here. But, uh, you're watching them, for the most part, guys trying to make it to the top, make it to the top level of fishing. It's a hard project. Jeff Evan Kung. Great shot right there of how, how much timber there is where he's fishing and, and a lot of those guys it's the exact same way. It can be very difficult to navigate through all that and present your bait where it needs to be and this wind to me is definitely going to affect the guys that are solely relying on forward sonar and being able to pick those fish apart one at a time. I think it's going to really um, change the way that they're going to have to approach today. Of course, again, a lot of these guys have different things on their mind. We all want to win, but at the end of the day, a few of these guys, most of these guys, I guess, are, are trying to qualify. So in the back of their mind, they want to just catch as much as they can to maintain a good finish here and move on to the next one. And I, I, I know how that feels all too well. Sometimes it's not all about winning that trophy. And uh, so a lot of these guys will, will keep doing what they're doing to try to put together a good bag. And you never know when one of them will run into a 10 pounder, obviously. What are we looking at there, Stetson? There you, where you see the timber close to the boat on the left side of the screen, and then when he panned up, it looked like there was the, where the vegetation started. So it'll grow out a little bit deeper, but it is still maybe on the inside of the timber line. Yeah, he's fish, where he's fishing there, the banks are a lot steeper, so that grass is only gonna come out to, it's still 20 feet, but it's not that far off the bank. What I mean by that is the grass line is narrow. It's a yep. thin band of grass. Now it looks like based on our map, Evan will be protected from that north wind. Maybe he'll get some productive time until maybe the wind shifts or it lays down a little bit for the guys on the south end. But you obviously saw Jeremiah with the wind blowing in on his area. The first fish already this morning. Back to hard growth.
Hargrove, that, two years removed from Tarleton State. That's where he fished in college oh. just two years ago. Oh, yeah. He ain't ready. Looks like a good fish here. That's a good one to start today. Shoo wee! There go. Might have taken about an hour. Yeah. But I'll wait an hour for a fish like that at Washita to start your final day when you start the day a pound and a half back. Hey, Andrew might fish a little harder. Think he thinks he's three pounds back starting the day. He might fish a little bit harder than he was earlier. <laughs> it's not all bad, right? <laughs> Is that how it works? <laughs> Andrew Hargrove moving into second place with that one right there. Yes, a good way to start his day ahead of Matt Baker. Now, Paul Marks, we saw him put one in the boat also. And Jeremiah Kendi, though, with a good one to start three and a three and a quarter pounds to get things going today. So we have some action. We're expecting things to open up as the morning goes along here on Lake Washita. Our SV spool design is made with one thing in mind, casting control. Whether it is casting lightweight baits, skipping, pitching, or casting into the wind, the Tatula SV reels virtually eliminate backlashes when set properly. Now with our groundbreaking technology and innovations, backlashes can be a thing of the past. They say great minds think alike which could explain why for over 50 years, more anglers have chosen Humminbird to see the water more clearly. Our tech predicts where the bites are and our innovations foreshadow the sport's future. We've helped anglers win tournaments and the weekend, taught them to fish smarter, not harder. So if you're not already on board, it's worth asking yourself why, when the people in the know agree that Humminbird is simply clearly better. Every day, we live to serve you. On the farm, our tires work as hard as you do, ensuring a bountiful harvest. We empower your discovery beneath the surface. We stand tall with you to conquer temple. We maximize efficiency in an interconnected world. We help you build the foundation of tomorrow. No matter the job, we know that your success is our success. Because at Maximum Tire, we get the job done. When you go rogue, you make your own fun. No matter what it looks like. Rogue nicotine pouches. Long lasting, great tasting. Go rogue. Next weekend on FS1. The best anglers in the world compete at the highest level. It's the Bassmaster Elite Series. Live from Toledo Bend. Next Saturday and Sunday morning on FS1.
You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. All these fish here are really, really skittish, like very skittish. If you don't throw past them, um, if you throw it out on top of them, they'll, they'll spook. If you get the boat too close, they'll spook. Uh, if you're just fishing too shallow and are too close to them, they'll spook. I'm fishing pretty deep. I'm fishing 20 to 30 foot of water. And uh, I think that's helped me a little bit just because it, they're further away. And then, like I said, making long casts, 90 to 100 feet, trying to keep the fish at 80, somewhere in there. So. Warehouse Doc Talk with Andrew Hargrove just moments ago. Put his first keeper in the boat, the young man from Moody, Texas, down there between Waco and Austin. Oh, yeah. yeah Andrew's yeah, really ready. come into his own lately. Like you said, he ended the year with a top, with two top tens in the opens last season. Ozarks at Harris Chain and then started the year strong at Okeechobee, a renewed confidence. And then a boom, a top 10 here at Washita. Not only is it the top 10, within striking distance of a victory in a classic berth. I asked him what it would be like to fish his first classic in his home state of Texas yeah. now that we've announced it at Ray Roberts. And he said, I think we'd have a whole lot of supporters show up and that would be super cool to be able to do it in my home state. There you go. Yeah, and that was moments ago. Andrew Hargrove now in second place ahead of Matt Baker. Fifth place right now is this man from the Delta, California Delta. Turtle Rock, California, Christian Ostrander. There's one. I don't know how big he is. He should have been though. I'll run around for a minute. Get out of that tree, Harold. Not a bad one, I guess. Looks like he's throwing a shad colored crankbait, which is somewhat unusual for this time of year there. Right where she should have been. Not real sure if he's fishing Maybe grass or if he's fishing timber. Out there in the Delta, saved a bunch of money to go all in on the last years this year, traveling with uh, Loberg. Yeah, Andrew Loberg is a name that you'll want to know if you do not know him. Fished for Chico State a few years ago, moved to Alabama actually. So I asked Christian last night, I said, You just hanging out over here? You driving your van back and forth to California? And he said, I'm hanging out with Andrew at his house in Alabama if he lets me, you know, every now and then. So uh, he, he said, said he taken, might fly well back taken care of. here and there when he's got a couple weeks off. He's got a guide service out there, a couple guys working for him. So you can see right there, there's a, some grass on the bottom. Looks like he's on kind of the edge of a hump. Little fish right there, yeah. Yeah, what you can see there is the bottom. Uh, that's a fish that's cruising. Looks like it's swimming away from him kind of towards that little dip there. Now he's gonna start swimming up on the on the flat, but he looks like he's kind of on top of the, the flat a little bit, kind of throwing probably just a little depression there. You can see he's turning, the bottom's changing because he's turning the troll motor and where that fish first popped up was about 70 to 75 feet away from the boat. definitely have an advantage to get those fish to bite. The further away from the boat you can make that cast. A lot of anglers this week talked about where there was taller vegetation, where it was a little bit thicker. You could not see the fish. 
you would have to just bomb cast 70, 80, 100 feet out there and try to get it around the grass and you'd see them come up out of the grass and start to chase it. Then you have to do your cadence based on how they may want to react to it. But with this scarce grass off the bottom, they probably are a little bit more defined nearby. As you can see, I've been through here a few times. It's a good story on Zach Gutramont's uh, big 10 pound 14 ouncer that he was getting ready to leave, pull his troll motor up, and then saw it a on lot his of graph, cast stuff to the big fish and bit right so away. Stuff up high might look like a fish, it's just grass or stuff floating in the water. See his bait just dropped down to the bottom around the 65, 70 foot mark out on that where the clump is um, thicker? Yeah, most of it's just out here a little deeper, it gets a little thinner and you look back up towards the flat, that's all that's all grass right there. It's all hydrilla. Andrew Hargrove. Let's make a move over to the uh, one of the two Arkansans in our top ten left championship Saturday, Matt Baker, Glenwood, Arkansas. College angling here in Arkansas at uh, Arkansas Tech University, Russellville. Got him. All right. Stay out, Zach. Maybe a keeper. Nothing special. Shedding my gloves to do this. I talked to Matt last night for a few minutes, and uh, he said he's he's really trying to target those fish with a jerk bait, just to get them to react. He's very very good at that. Got a good keeper there to start the day. Our top three all now have a keeper in the boat, and a decent decent sized one, at least a. Two and a half pounder, it seems, for all three of them at minimum as we head over to fourth place starting the day. Logan Johnson in the University of Alabama a couple years ago, one of our yeah, early 16. few years of college it's fishing. Big 14. Good year on the EQs last year, 22nd place. Come here, girl. Good effort. Come here, girl. Good start this year. Come here, girl. Come here, girl. Come back here. Come here, girl. Come here, girl. I know. I know. Come here. back right there, son. <sighs> Gotta warm you up. Good Lord, she smoked it too. She got that bait. <sighs> Thank you, God, that's one. We call her, we're doing good, but I keep number <laughs> by tacking them. Uh. I stand corrected, Tom. Our top four have all caught a two and a half pounder or bigger now that Logan Johnson there you go. has put that one in the boat. Logan Johnson. A little roll tide flavor to the action here <laughs> on Lake Washita this morning. I see things maybe picking up just a little bit. Of course, uh, Stetson, you told us that 10 o'clock is kind of the magic time on this time of year on Washita. Jeremiah Kendi still on top. Andrew Hargrove moving himself up into second place there. Christian Ostrander. 
Our California angler, Matt Baker, started the day in second, and Logan Johnson moved up into the top five. Plenty more to come when we return. The next generation of St. Croix Mojo Bass and Mojo Bass Glass deliver breakthrough levels of comfort and control. Based on anthropometric data, radical new Trigon handle and Dynamics real seat designs conform the rod to the angler, not the other way around. While 34 dialed-in casting and spinning models support cutting-edge presentations, from BFS to 8-ounce swim baits. So go ahead, find your mojo, and unlock your bionic superpowers. I'll be your beast of burden, an ally in enemy territory. Overgrown, nasty, unkind. Throw me in and watch me swim. Mother Nature may be tough, I'm tougher. I'll take you where chaos is the cost of entry, where the fish are worth the fight. If you ask me, the bigger the question marks, the better the quest. Forged from the harshest environments, Dakota lithium batteries are built to endure. Engineered with lithium iron phosphate, they give you twice the runtime at half the weight, last five times longer, and provide exceptional lifetime value. Let's go! Backed by an 11-year warranty, they keep you on the water from sunup to sundown. Go further. Last longer. Play harder. When you go rogue, a top 20 playlist doesn't set the mood. You do. Rogue nicotine pouches. Great taste. No compromises. Go rogue. Bassmaster live from here in the Washita Mountains in the state of Arkansas. Oak Lawn for over a hundred years, one of the top, top racing venues in the country. This is the St. Croix Bassmaster Open at Lake Washita, presented by seven reels and also our live coverage courtesy of Maxim Tires. Very happy to welcome them on board today. Making all this possible, we sure appreciate that. What a great place here. Great, great tourist destination since all the way back into the 19th century. Here and Visit Hot Springs is our fantastic host organization. We appreciate it a lot. How much have you dropped there at the track? I don't, I don't have enough to, to wager on the ponies. I only gamble out on the water, you know what I'm saying, when we put it up on the on the tournament entries, you know? One, one word of advice for you, bet big, win big. Hey, you can take that to the bank. To the bank. Hey, uh, for, for lack of better terms, I feel like we're going to have a horse race today at Washita as well with how many nice good fish we've seen. You know, I you like, like that? that? Very good, very good. That's Lake Washita. First time for the Bassmasters here in over 20 years. The man the lead has not fished a Bassmaster event, Jeremiah Kendi, in over 20 years. So he is, remains the man on top. Got a first look for today from the Missouri angler, Andy Newcomb. Lake of the Ozarks area. Good finishing. 
open up there last year. Looks like he's way up the South Fork River. anyway not much of one but it we're is, on the board the ball and chain the i ridge. saw it on his deck yesterday when I asked him about it <laughs> first carolina rig fish all week but i promise you it's not the first one it's that's been much, caught on that lake <laughs> that's one for the old school <laughs> That's why I got excited and asked him about it. He said, you a big Carolina rig fan? I said, I'm a big, just different kind of fishing fan. So I, if you whip that out, you'll be the only one throwing the Carolina rig tomorrow. I promise you that probably. When he finally got it, he got it. My scale says negative 235 degrees. I don't think that's right. <laughs> it's close, but that's a little guy. Buck 58. That's one for the box, though. You say 150? Yeah, 150. Okay. And he top 20 at Okeechobee to start his year. Comes up here to Washita and makes it to the top 10. Man, we are, we got some emerging uh, bright stars out there. I got a really good feeling about Andy. You know, if you know, he had never fished with Bassmaster before until last year at Lake of the Ozarks. We came to his home lake, so we decided to jump in and fish it. But I had known his name just from paying attention to the world of fishing local regional stuff you start to see names pop up and with him being from missouri you see him fish ozarks table rock bull mm -hmm. shoal you see him around and he said that he really kind of got into tournament fishing in 2016 so it's been less than a decade he's been tournament fishing finally jumped into the you know a, a bfl division wins angler of the year his first year doing it jumps into you know a semi-pro level wins angler of the year his first year doing it and so he said you know what I, better time now than never to try to make the elite series and so three great finishes already in his three bassmaster events impressive tell you if i lose one and i find out i got a dull hook not be happy with myself you see jeremiah hasn't caught a fish in a while and that that's typical for throwing a lipless bait. I mean, you, you, can, you can definitely go hours without a bite. But he knows as well as I do that you don't really have to start worrying about it till, till 10, 11 o'clock and then things you can do when you're fishing shallow. Then things should Change pick up for him. It don't take two minutes, now I'm back. Sometimes it takes you four or five hours to catch a fish. That old five pounder, what's that? Grinding them down all day. Yeah, no doubt. It's hard to penetrate them five pounder lips. There he is. Is our leader Jeremiah Kendi, second Boom. fish. The cast the after he changed his hook. Yeah. <laughs> He's not a five pounder. One That's for one on that hook. hook. Just he could retire as the most right there, efficient see how hook. went all like through his lip. Uh huh. Damn. He just needs to be about four pounds bigger. But beggars can't be cheesers right now. I hope it's this hard to take every one of them off. A little history with Jeremiah and myself goes a long ways back. I started fishing with Jeremiah and his boat when I was 10, 11, 12 years old. Learned a lot from that guy on that exact lake and sure. all the other lakes around central Arkansas, but was able to travel with him as a co-angler back when I was 16 years old. So. 
got a lot of history with Jeremiah. Watching Paul Marks there on the left side of your screen, seeing his unit as he's... A couple hot ones coming up. Hooked up there. That's what you want to see. Was it two or three? Yeah, it looks competition like competition and then several. Number two. Jerk bait. So he's made a little move. He was out, out deeper, obviously, in the timber and spinning rod. Now he's back up there. Finesse power fishing, what I call it. Got a good keeper in the box. Two two pounders now, two, two plus for Paul Marks. He'll move up into it. Probably in the fourth place there, Jeremiah Kendi, though. We saw him put his second one in the boat. He's right on track. In fact, ahead of schedule compared to his uh, uh, output the first two days here. So uh, he's definitely the man to beat at this point. Andrew Hargrove, good morning for him. And Matt Baker, we're looking for him to get things going here before too much longer. Good, good anglers out there striving very hard on championship Saturday. Our SV spool design is made with one thing in mind, casting control. Whether it is casting lightweight baits, skipping, pitching, or casting into the wind, the Tatula SV reels virtually eliminate backlashes when set properly. Now with our groundbreaking technology and innovations, backlashes can be a thing of the past. Out here, it takes a certain type. The type who's always the first one out. The type who knows deep down everyone else is just fishing for second. Enter the Apex Series. See more fish. Seize more victories. Settle for nothing less. With unrivaled clarity, it's the top fish finder for the most demanding type of angler. Only from Hummingbird. Every day, we live to serve you. On the farm, our tires work as hard as you do, ensuring a bountiful harvest. We empower your discovery beneath the surface. We stand tall with you to conquer timber. We maximize efficiency in an interconnected world. We help you build the foundation of tomorrow. No matter the job, we know that your success is our success. Because at Maxim Tire, we get the job done. When you go rogue, you make your own fun. No matter what it looks like. Rogue nicotine pouches. Long lasting, great tasting. Go rogue. Next weekend on FS1. The best anglers in the world compete at the highest level. It's the Bassmaster Elite Series. Live from Toledo Bend, next Saturday and Sunday morning on FS1.
biggest day in racing just got bigger as Grand Marshal Dwayne The Rock Johnson will kick off the Daytona 500. The great American race returns tomorrow at 2.30 Eastern, only on Fox. Race we've got going on here today on Bassmaster Live will conclude today. This is Championship Saturday for our Opens EQ, second event of the season here at Lake Washita. Of course, there are nine events throughout this season, and the top nine anglers points-wise throughout that season, you have to fish all the events, are going to make it. Their, their pathway to the Elite Series is complete, the Elite Series being the top level of Bassmaster competitions. Very, very important day for these 10 anglers who are left from the original just under 200 who started at the start of this tournament. Of course, the winner will be awarded a spot in the World Championship, the Bass Pro Shops Bassmaster Classic for 2025, coming up Lake Ray Roberts in Texas and Fantastic Fort Worth that just recently announced. Go to a man from Cumming, Georgia, Lake Lanier area. Having a great season so far. One of the early uh, horses out front for sure, Paul Marks. There's grass and then small little timber stalks. Uh, the grass is so thick, it looks like the bottom right there, but it's like five foot of grass down there. See, he's kind of hanging out on the edges of the grass and he's trying to keep his bait oh, on probably on top Yesterday of it. Yesterday I caught my edges. big one right over there. It was real random. First time I'd even fished the bank in this creek, in this ditch. So if you look at the left top corner of the screen, that's where the boat is. You'll see the, the zero up there between the two fives. The left five, that is the transducer facing reverse. The forward five, 10, 15, that's, that's where his trolling motor's pointed. And uh, basically what you're seeing is from zero, you look straight down, that's under the boat. And you'll see as you go out further out to 80 feet, you kind of see how it slopes downhill. That's because he's looking from shallow to deep. So your picture is going to change depending on if you're shallow, deep, and which direction you're looking. If you're out deep looking in, it's going to be sloped uphill. If you're up shallow or looking out, it's going to slope downhill. That's what you're seeing right there. He's sitting right on top of a lot of grass. It's really thick right there, and you can see those trees, the timber sticking up through the grass. It is hard also with sensitivity. You can change your settings, contrast, you know, turn the gain up. But when you're around timber and grass, there's gotta be a happy medium because sometimes you blow it up. You can't see the individual spots sometimes because of how thick the grass is. So how do you, how do you combat that? Well, I feel like you, you, there's two ways to fish it. Either you have to understand that you are only going to see a select few fish and hopefully you can get those fish to bite or you almost have to fish it like you're not looking for specific fish, which is what Jeremiah's doing. He's throwing that bait up there on the bank, super shallow. Don't get me wrong, I promise you, he's looking at that screen and, and seeing how those fish are reacting even up there shallow, but there's, there's two ways to fish it. And I'm gonna say that the majority of these guys are trying to, to pinpoint specific fish holding on the edges. But the guys that are throwing moving baits, you know, a lot of those are, are waiting to see those fish come up out of the grass and see how they react to the bait and then change their cadence, you know, depending on how the fish are coming towards their bait. And a lot of them don't give you a chance. If, they, if it's a real hot fish, he'll come straight out of, the, out of the grass. And by the time you see what's going on, he's already got it. And I think we saw it on Evan Kung's shot. It was it was just pointed at his console. You could see where the troll motor was pointed on the top right of the screen. Some guys have that up there, some don't. But at that point, he was pointing out to the right side of the boat. So Paul could be, it's wherever his troll motor's turning or if he's got two transducers, whichever one it's reading from. But most of the time, these guys are trying to point forward where they're going. But at times when they pan to the left or right, that's why it drastically changes the bottom. And it's a learning process. I mean, the, when I'm out there doing what they're doing, I'm continuously going back and forward. And, and what makes it tough is you have to have your face so dialed into that, to that screen. So if you're, if you're panning right to left, right to left really quickly, you want to be able to uh, pinpoint those fish if you come across one. 
Looks like he sees one there. Yeah, you can see one. He pitched it about 25 feet out, and the fish were. Yeah, see, there's a nice one on that tree at 30 feet. Those are tough to catch because you get so close. Uh, 30 feet is basically right on top of them in, in forward sonar terms. Doesn't mean it won't bite, but especially with as clear as that water is and the area he's fishing is the clearest water on the lake most of the time. So it can be a challenge to get some of those fish to, to react. Now, another thing that whether you're looking at fish with forward facing sonar, a lot of people, you know, have their thoughts and opinions on it. One thing it's done, it's made y'all more efficient around cover. I've been at Washita, Washita before plenty and lost thousands of dollars of baits on timber that I didn't know was there because it's just out of sight or it's 30 feet in front of the boat. Now you can be, if, even if you're not seeing fish, it's going to make you more efficient on the water of avoiding cover or being close to it without in it. Yeah, it definitely helps, you know, present your bait more efficiently, as you said, just not hanging up on the cover and, and just being able to, to go down the bank and, and not run over stuff. You know, a lot of times you, you tear your stuff up on your trolling motor, get stuck on a stump in your boat. And that area of the lake is completely full of trees and it just, it really helps, helps you maneuver through that structure. Arch remains in fifth place right now. Two keepers in the boat, two, two pounders and change. One and two, Jeremiah Kendi and Christian Ostrander. Both throwing moving baits and both not utilizing forward sonar as much as the other guys at this moment in time. I know Jeremiah, he, he knows how to do that well, and, and if it gets tough on him, he will definitely move out and start doing that, but. You can see him peek at it. He'll peek oh, at yeah, it every yeah, now and then. It's not relying on it, but, but being aware of it, yeah. And a lot of that, what they're peeking at is more of that being efficient, just staying, keeping their boat in the right depth. Because to be honest, a lot of guys don't use 2D anymore. Like I turn mine, I still have it, but I turn it off if I'm really keying in on keeping my boat in a certain depth or keeping it in a certain distance. I use distance now more than depth. If there's grass under me, I wanna keep my boat, I wanna keep that grass at a certain distance from my boat underneath me. So it's just, it's just changed the way we fish, changed the way we look at uh, electronics and technology, but there's still something to be said for going down the bank at Lake Washita in late February and being able to throw a, a lipless bait or a crankbait and get those big bites up shallow and over that grass. It's it's a it's a lot of fun. Tommy, we're looking at our top two guys, Jeremiah Kendi, just down the road in Benton, Arkansas, and then Christian Ostrander from California. Yeah. He's a Cal Delta guy. Right. His family is not a fishing family. He's kind of done it on his own. He got it all of last year, saving up his money to pursue the opens. His mentor and his team partner back home is Ish Monroe. He used to get his tackle from Ish at a also discounted rate at the yeah. end of the season. Yeah. So Ish had nothing but good things to say about Christian. And Matt Baker swings in another, maybe I think it's keeper number two. Yeah, it looks like a keeper. Close. One small one already, a pound and a quarter. That one's going to be very close to that size as well, I would think. Matt did say he, he has caught fish on a lot of different baits, so he's, uh, he's definitely trying to still put it together, figure it out. He's got time to do it. Andrew Hargrove, a little bit of success this morning, moved himself up into third from fourth place, I believe, to start his day. That he feels confident in the multiple spots out there that he's scoped out through the course of this tournament. We're down to the third day championship Saturday. The winner here will gain access to the World Championship in 2025 Bass Pro Shops Bassmaster Classic. Got more on the way.
The next generation of St. Croix Mojo Bass and Mojo Bass Glass deliver breakthrough levels of comfort and control. Based on anthropometric data, radical new trigon handle and dynamics real seat designs conform the rod to the angler, not the other way around. While 34 dialed-in casting and spinning models support cutting-edge presentations, from BFS to 8-ounce swim baits. So go ahead, find your mojo, and unlock your bionic superpowers. You're here for the hook set and nothing else. Because the battle between you and the bass should always be front and center. And now that the best trolling motors ever made are even better, we'll lead the charge. So you can focus on getting them to bite whenever and wherever the fight takes you. With Minn Kota, you're free to fish on any front. Forged from the harshest environments, Dakota lithium batteries are built to endure. Engineered with lithium iron phosphate, they give you twice the runtime at half the weight, last five times longer, and provide exceptional lifetime value. Let's go! Backed by an 11-year warranty, they keep you on the water from sunup to sundown. Go further, last longer, play harder. When you go rogue, a top 20 playlist doesn't set the mood. You do. Rogue nicotine pouches, great taste. No compromises. Go rogue. Go. Great to have you with us here on Bassmaster Live Championship Saturday at the second St. Croix Bassmaster okay. Open of this year of 2024. Lake Washita in Arkansas is where we are. Look at some of the scenes this morning. Ten anglers left in the action here today. All gunning for that top spot. Looking to get as many points as they can gather here. Two events into a nine event season here. So this is a, a critical day, especially for these anglers who have uh, worked well enough to make it. Uh, here today, Jeremiah Kendi, the local from up the road in Benton, Arkansas, still holding down that lead. He was the leader to start today. Christian Ostrander from out the California Delta. It's a man who was pulled up in second place behind him. Also, we've got uh, three or four anglers who got a great start down at Lake Okeechobee and are continuing on that path there, just uh, building their points. Boy, this is the time to get it done. This is one of them right here from Georgia. Paul Marks. We've seen some guys fishing around islands today. Not, you know, they're way offshore, but they have some land, some good contour around them. I was looking online, there's 200 islands listed for Lake Washita. Oh, That's a God, ton of islands for a 40,000 acre lake. You see that good one following it right there. Yep, got it. <laughs> mm. The chain pickerel. Yeah, Jack, we used to call him. 
It's the Arkansas State Fish. <laughs> is it really? No. Yeah. It's the Lake, Lake Mom State today. Fish. It is, it is the... Uh, <laughs> When the grass disappeared in Washita, those those really disappeared. You really, really? didn't hardly ever catch really? one. These things are. They when I was a kid, you used to catch as many of those as you did bass, which was kind of crazy. And it looks like it's coming back now. You're starting to catch. It's terrible. I guess they just sit them. in the grass but, all day. But it's crazy that it's the grass that that brings them. Yeah. Or that they live in. You don't want to catch the real Arkansas state fish, an alligator gar. Oof. Glad he didn't eat it head first. Well, I see the chain pickerel's a sign that you got some pretty good water quality. It's yeah, always been. For I, sure. I, I guess that's right. And I've always said when you're catching those, you're in the right area. You know, you're, you're where the forage is and they eat the same things. It's a different deal. Yes, we're seeing maybe Demiki style baits at times or drop shots, things like that. But Stetson, with our schedule for the Elite Series, Toledo Bend, Lake Fork, you'll have two in Florida, then you'll have Murray, Wheeler, Smith, and two up north. Do you see this year maybe being a forward facing sonar? Line, it could be dominated, but more like power fishing, jerk three, baits, three, bigger three, baits, three, not just three, dropping on fish with spinning rod. Like yeah. you feel like there's a good mix that could happen with where we're going? Well, there's definitely going to be a good mix. But the, the, the thing is, is, is people talk about how, how it's just spinning rods and this and that, but you th you've always thrown what you felt like you needed to throw, no matter where we went in the country, to get bites. And to me, a spinning rod and a, a minnow style bait, those things catch a lot of big fish. And so, yeah, we're going to see we're going to see some diversity in the in the things that are the patterns that are used, the techniques that are used, but you're still going to see a lot of spinning gear this season on the trail for sure. Mm. Let's get back up in the South Fork of the Lake and Andy Newcomb. Back plenty, the Ozarks guy. plenty of real estate. I didn't yeah. see another boat then. Yeah, you can wheel and deal out there today. Probably not a lot of pleasure boating going on this morning. No, either. I wouldn't <laughs> doubt it. You can see that water's got a lot more color to it. Doesn't look dirty, but it definitely has more color. Tom, we need to get on their diet plan, bud. Is he? Beat down Blake? Yeah. Good for him. We'll call it a pound and three quarters. Better one, better than his first one for Andy Newcomb. Right now, let's turn to Andy Newcomb for our Bass Pro Shops Top Lures. Hey guys, Andy Newcomb here, uh, stop number two of the Bassmaster EQs on Lake Washita. Off to a pretty good start, hoping to squeeze into that top ten. Uh, my two key baits have been a half ounce evergreen jackhammer chatterbait uh, with a menace grub trailer. I've been throwing the chatterbait at anything with wind, transition banks, uh, brush, just kind of everything, and then a wacky worm with a bait cave custom slim stick. Um, the wacky worm I'm picking off kind of isolated fish that I see in shallow brush piles. That's Pro Shop's top lures, Andy Newcomb. Uh, good, good start, 61st place in Okeechobee, right kind of upper middle of the pack. 
Yeah, and uh, when you look at his baits, he shows off a chatter bait for me yesterday in a wacky rig. He had a bunch of other baits on there. It's good to be a Washita when you can also throw a Carolina rig and throw a crankbait as well. So Andy's keeping a lot of things in play, which is cool to see yeah. a lot of variety and day to day. We've had three different weather days. It's been sustained cold. Yesterday it wasn't cold until the last check-in, so some guys didn't even fish in the cold yesterday. And then the first day it was completely sunny, 70 degrees, and still. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these guys have had to adjust, especially because it was rainy, windy, and cloudy all of practice. You're going to top out only in the mid-40s today, so it'd be a, yet another different day of weather. As we get back to Paul Marks, we'll spend some time with him the last few minutes. We're about to hit a piece of timber. Maybe not. Should be close. We'll probably keep. Thirteen and a quarter. Well, thinks that one's going to keep. Let's get back to Andrew Hargrove right now. Andrew's sort of moving up and down between third, fourth, and fifth during the course of this morning. on that one. That's a big one. He's fishing in an area of the lake that I really, really like out there. There's a lot of better than average quality fish out there. The last last day I spent on that lake, uh, caught a partner of mine fishing a tournament. He caught a almost six pounder within I'm gonna say it's within a couple hundred yards of where he's at right there. So there's a lot of big fish there to be caught. Your partner is that? Would that be your son, or is it a different partner? You got you have roaming partners. Well, I've got two partners right now. So <laughs> it, it's actually my son's partner's dad. Oh, okay. Ah. Let's go. Jeremiah Kendi, your leader, our top four within two pounds and change at this point right now. But this is gonna looks like this is gonna give him a a move up. Yeah. Pounds wise. Bam. Notice how a lot of these guys are moving around a lot and, and getting, I would I would say protected, protected wind from the wind. But Jeremiah, he's looking for that wind. That's what he wants today. If he gets it, he's going to keep that in his hand all day. Jeremiah Kendi took over the lead yesterday. And he is hanging on to it today. In fact, he's extended it just a little bit. The rest of the field. Not letting him go and get too much distance between them. We, we still got a good horse race going on right here. Andy Newcomb from Missouri now moved up into second place. And we got more on the way from Lake Washita. Our SV spool design is made with one thing in mind. Casting control. Whether it is casting lightweight baits, skipping, pitching, or casting into the wind, the Tatula SV reels virtually eliminate backlashes when set properly. Now with our groundbreaking technology and innovations, backlashes can be a thing of the past. They say great minds think alike, which could explain why for over 50 years, more anglers have chosen Humminbird to see the water more clearly. Our tech predicts where the bites are, and our innovations foreshadow the sport's future. We've helped anglers win tournaments and the weekend, taught them to fish smarter, not harder. 
So, if you're not already on board, it's worth asking yourself why, when the people in the know agree that Humminbird is simply, clearly better. Every day, we live to serve you. On the farm, our tires work as hard as you do, ensuring a bountiful harvest. We empower your discovery beneath the surface. We stand tall with you to conquer temple. We maximize efficiency in an interconnected world. We help you build the foundation of tomorrow. No matter the job, we know that your success is our success. Because at Maxim Tire, we get the job done. When you go rogue, you make your own fun. No matter what it looks like. Rogue nicotine pouches. Long lasting, great tasting. Go rogue. Next weekend on FS1. The best anglers in the world compete at the highest level. It's the Bassmaster Elite Series, live from Toledo Bend, next Saturday and Sunday morning on FS1. Saturday, it's Bassmaster Live, and it is the St. Croix Bassmaster Open. In Lake Washita, presented by Seven Reels. Live coverage brought to you by Maxim Tires. Liking that today, new name on our, our uh, rejoiner there for you. Love having them around and making this happen for us today. See them later this year for the St. John's River Elite. That's right, they're gonna be the sponsor of the one down in Florida. This is our second tournament down in Florida. Very much looking forward to that as well. What a beautiful place, Lake Washita. Big attraction for boaters and anglers, especially for a long, long time. Got the action going on, and we have in our studio so happy to have, I mean, the expert analysis by the man. We're fishing on his home lake, Stetson Blaylock, in his eighth year as a Bassmaster Elite Series winner. Look at those stats there. A big win over at Winya Bay. We all remember that very well. 19 top 20s. Going to fish your fifth classic, fifth five in a row. That's going some. That's not easy. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I've always looked at myself as just being able to, to fish consistent and just be steady. And uh, to me, that's what's gotten me to my fifth classic. And uh, I can't lie, though, I'm ready for a win. I may change things up this year and fish a little bit different, kind of kind of fish for uh, those bigger bites, try to, try to bring home another blue trophy. Tommy, he might bring home a different colored trophy, not a blue trophy, the classic trophy. It's at Grand Lake. He was one of our picks right. at the desk of when we were doing Absolutely. the classic preview because of the area. And you show up in these pre-spawn classics, in these March classics, Gunnersville, you did a Hartwell, you've done it, a couple top fives in the last few years. Yeah, and I have a top 10 at Oklahoma on Grand Lake also, so I know that lake pretty well. And uh, we're going at a great time, a time that I really enjoy fishing. and. Uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of staying low key about that one because because <laughs> I know Jason Christie's going to get a lot of love for that tournament, but uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it for sure. He's only $150,000 or so it looked like from the Century Club, so another year of making all the checks for Stetson. Maybe he mixes in a win. He could have that done by midseason for sure. I, I would not rule that out. I think that's a definite possibility. We sure are glad to have him in the studio today. The analysis has been great. Let us helping us figure out this Lake Washita, which is a fantastic fishing lake, but uh, it's not a free throw. It's, you, you gotta work at it. It is a challenge. There he is. A lot of guys will tell you Jeremiah Kendi is one of the best on Lake Washita, and he's showing you why right here. You know, starting out slow the last couple days, but when it comes down to crunch time, championship Saturday, he's he's putting fish in the boat. 
another good quality keeper there. And uh, I think that's four, yeah, four for Jeremiah. And to be honest, it isn't even time yet. And he knows that. He knows that what he's doing right now is just icing on the cake. And if the wind pick keep, you know, keeps blowing, uh, those other guys are going to have a tough time catching them. And, and you already see it happening right now. I mean, they're, they're going to have to start making some adjustments to, to be able to catch up to what Ooh. he's doing. Live a little juicier. And, and you see the flurries, like you said. Yes. He, he went for a long time after that first one, and now he's caught two two-plus pounders in the last 10 minutes. It could happen quick. He's almost to a limit. I see another catch here, a small one. Might be number one. This is Evan Kong. I think he's long enough. <laughs> Another new development, you can speak to this maybe, yeah. Stetson, is smallmouth. They said oh, you yeah. can, we, in past oh, years, it seems like you weren't allowed to weigh in a smallmouth. You could catch one, but you couldn't weigh one in. We could weigh in two per person this week. And so smallmouth are pretty new to Washita, but with the conditions, environment, and depth of water, it should be a place that they could thrive. Yeah, they're coming back strong. I've caught a couple nice ones down towards the dam this, this winter. And, uh, you know, I don't know if it'll ever be a smallmouth fishery but I definitely think that they will start playing some in tournaments in the near future for sure. One thing you see here that it's so important to point out is Jeremiah is the only person that's really utilizing a lipless crankbait the way that everybody around Arkansas knows that it can be used and be effective here on Washita, and that's very surprising to me. I, I figured there'd be other guys figure that out you know, even, even the guys that are from Texas, places like that, that are used to fisheries that have the grass like this and the rocks and timber mix, they're, they're just not yep. fishing that way, which Wind is, is friend. kind of surprising to me. I think you just heard Jeremiah say, the wind is your friend there. And I, I mean, he's one of the ones that taught me that from a very young age, and I'm talking about 10 years old. I was spending time in the boat with him, 10, 11, 12 years old, and... Uh, yeah, I may have plucked all the fruit here. <laughs> well, for everyone that doesn't understand, explain the mechanics of that, why that helps his, what he's doing. Well, the water's clear, and there's those fish are... I can't see what he's throwing at right there, but I, I guarantee you it's a little ditch. There's a little cut right there in the, in the island in the bank, and he's throwing that bait as far as he can up in that little cut in that ditch, and the wind blows in there on those banks it positions the bait i think it i think it moves the crawfish around even oh, even okay. though they're on the bottom but it just positions those fish inside edge of that grass and inside those little cuts and dish, ditches and it allows them a really good ambush ambush point for the lipless crankbait and to me it's just one of the best ways to catch a big stringer there that last fish he caught Gave him nine and a half on the day and a more than a six pound lead, Jeremiah Kendi. You've also got to keep in mind too, these guys that are that are running the forward facing sonar game and fishing deeper oh, and those things. It's a lot harder box. to catch these fish when the wind's blowing. They're on the screen. Uh, we come out here, we fish the bank, threw a jerk bait, caught a couple really, really small ones, a couple trash fish. Now I came back out here where we've done most of our damage in this tournament with keepers. So, depth, uh, not really a bottom depth I'm looking for. I'm just looking for fish out here that are swimming around eating bait. They're anywhere from 10 feet down to 60 foot down. And it's so hard to hit them. They're swimming around, there's timber everywhere. Um, really using my electronics. I got the clearest ones you can get. Uh, Trent at Sonar Pros rigs my boat and it's, you can't get no better than this. Around all this timber, I'm using Seaguar uh, Tatsu, 10 pound. And you've seen I just kind of horse that striper in. No issues with it. I mean, it's strong stuff. But these fit, seems like the largemouth are 30 plus feet down. It's really weird. The spotted bass are up high. Stripers, they're everywhere. Oh, all depths. 
He just did a great job well, explaining there. You'll see he's, he's in, in 60 feet, feet plus, plus of water, but he's actually catching those fish anywhere from five feet under the surface down to 40, 50, 60 feet deep. And he's just looking for specific fish to spend it out in that timber. You can see all the trees on his screen. And uh, those fish will just hang around that cover, but they're also, a lot of them are just free swimming out there in the middle looking for bait, looking for something to ambush. Cold this morning, line's freezing to the reel. It's kind of hard to hit some of the fish, can't cast far enough with it frozen. Eyes are froze, holding the line in there. I mean, when you see 60 feet of water, 52 feet of water, and the trees come up, they're within five to 10 feet of the surface based right. on, I can't see his, you know, the line being strong, the depth on the side of the graph, but that's basically what the they come up to. One of these tall trees, you got to throw at it. And I've had several hit the tree, reeling them in and haven't broke line yet here. Like our pictures of the anglers, our pictures from, from the, the front facing sonar are dependent upon cell service. And yeah. We're having a little bit of, we don't have all the resolution that, that probably that Paul is seeing. Right yes. Now. So yeah. when he says it's clear, I mean, the fact that we can see what we've seen with the grass and the timber, and then you can see it that defined in that deep of water, you know it's clear on his end. But yes, getting it through, if you've ever been to Lake Washita, I mean, there ain't you a house the on the lake. No, yeah, you, 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 are, you leave, no you know, you better yeah. get gas before you get there. So yeah. many trees, the whole lake's nearly like this. Some places are taller than others, but this place, they nearly, you can see them whenever you go right over them. I wouldn't want to run in here, It'd be kind of dangerous. And I'm guessing that he picked this style of fishing based off of Lake Lanier, big spotted bass, timber, timber. timber. There's, there's one thing that, that separates the two lakes. Washita doesn't have a big concentration of three to six pounds spotted bass like Lanier does. And I understand why he's doing what he's doing, but I also know Washita very well. And it, unless he starts catching some of those better quality largemouth that are in there, which obviously he has to get to this point, uh, in the top 10, but it's going to be tough for him if he doesn't get some of those better largemouth to, to cooperate. It's been a while since we checked in the man that caught an almost 11 pounder yesterday. <laughs> that Gutramon. Each angler has 20 islands. If we wanted to divvy them up, everybody can have some 20 islands to yourself and Zach's over near hey, one of them. stay off my island. <laughs> <laughs> There's number one. I think so, I'll double check him, but. Looks like a spotted bass. And again, you'll notice these, a lot of these guys are catching mostly spotted bass out here this morning. You, you've seen a couple nice large mouth, but they're gonna have to make some adjustments. It's a different day. The weather's totally different. It can be a challenge. You'd rather not have the, the washdog spotted bass in your in your live well right. at the end of the day. Absolutely. Okay. You we, should, we'll talk there was a that. reason that Zach had a 1014 on one side and he had his three spotted bass he weighed in yesterday on the other <laughs> live well. <laughs> Jeremiah Kendi extending that lead right now, almost, uh, well, six and a half pounds. Anyway, we'll see how it works out. More to come from Washita. The next generation of St. Croix Mojo Bass and Mojo Bass Glass deliver breakthrough levels of comfort and control. Based on anthropometric data, radical new trigon handle and dynamics reel seat designs conform the rod to the angler, not the other way around. While 34 dialed-in casting and spinning models support cutting-edge presentations, from BFS to 8-ounce swim baits. So go ahead, find your mojo, and unlock your bionic superpowers. I'll be your beast of burden, an ally in enemy territory, overgrown, nasty, unkind. Throw me in and watch me swim. Mother Nature may be tough, I'm tougher. I'll take you where chaos is the cost of entry, where the fish are worth the fight. If you ask me, the bigger the question marks, the better the quest. 
Forged from the harshest environments, Dakota lithium batteries are built to endure. Engineered with lithium iron phosphate, they give you twice the runtime at half the weight, last five times longer, and provide exceptional lifetime value. Let's go! Backed by an 11-year warranty, they keep you on the water from sunup to sundown. Go further. Last longer. Play harder. When you go rogue, a top 20 playlist doesn't set the mood. You do. Rogue nicotine pouches. Great taste. No compromises. Go rogue. Today on FS1, the future stars are back with roaring engines, grueling non-stop action. See who claims the first checkered flag of the season today at 5 Eastern on FS1. NASCAR Infinity Series racing coming your way today. Big day for sports here in the, in the last half of winter here. So it feels like winter probably to these anglers out there on Lake Washita today. It was about <laughs> below freezing when they got started. Wind whipping around about eight to ten miles an hour. And you got a little sunshine now. Things are not quite as uh, chilly as it was to begin with. We have ten anglers left on this day from the original almost 200 boats. These opens tournaments are packed with talent and lots of it, and they will fill up a lake. But these guys are getting to pretty much fish where they want to today. Strander, Schroeder, and Kung here. The leader, Jeremiah Kendi, is uh, currently in the middle of a move right now. He's, uh, as Stetson Blalock explained to us, he has got a definite, probably map inside of his head with certain touch points for today, for sure. And I know it's like that on any lake you go to, that there's always a handful of locals that have a lot of knowledge. And there, there was definitely more than just Jeremiah and Matt Baker in this event that know the lake very well. Uh, just worked out for Jeremiah this week that things played into his favor, but uh, I know if I was in this tournament and in this top 10, I would be scared of that guy. He knows a lot about the lake, and, and Matt does too, but Jeremiah just has years and years of experience in these exact situations, knowing what to do to still put a good bag on the scales. And like Scott Martin at Okeechobee. Absolutely, <laughs> yep, absolutely. Okay. Last year, Stetson was the first year in a long time we have not had an Elite Series angler win an Open. Wow, didn't realize that. 
And I think that that was going to be more of a trend, in my opinion, because you're now making so many more people for the Elite Series Dream fishing all nine. The odds are most people are going to be in it for for nine classic spots for the Elite Series berths. And so the competition at each event is going to be sustained and not go up and down, you know, per yeah, event. Yeah. Those three right there. And that's the only reason why Martin said he entered Okeechobee. Backyard, I got a chance to win, make the classic. I mean, is that kind of, would that uh, make your choice if you had something so good looking? I mean, yeah, it, to me, it's it's obviously, Washita is my home lake. And, and again, I, I feel like I could have could have had a chance to compete there, but um, yeah, I feel like if you if you know a lake like Scott knows Okeechobee, why not get in that tournament and, and take a shot? And obviously, he's had success there. It's not just his home lake. He's actually proven he can be very, very dominant there. And he did it again. This is Logan Johnson from Jasper, Alabama. Home of Smith Lake. Smith Lake in the rotation for the Elite Series this year. And I mentioned to you guys, yeah, Logan Johnson, uh, former Alabama Crimson Tide college fisherman. Yeah. Back in the early days of it, I guess he would have graduated or finished like a, the year I was starting. So he's just a few years older than, you know, early 30s. And he said uh, he guides now. And so he'll, he'll have young kids with him. And he, he doesn't guide like a traditional guide. It's more of an instructional, teaching younger anglers, you know, the next steps. I like when you go down on it. And he said these young anglers will talk and brag, you know, I love Jordan Lee. I love, the, you know, this angler, that angler. And he's like, I fished against Jordan Lee and did pretty good. And he's like, no way. You're so much older. And he's like, I'm not older than Jordan. We're the same age. And so he had to convince people. I promise, like, I, I, had, a, I had a good high school college resume. Well, within a week's time, as a matter of fact, next Thursday, the Bassmaster Elite Series will kick off with a Gamakatsu. Bassmaster Elite on legendary Toledo Bend Reservoir in Manny, Louisiana. Be live on Bassmaster.com. Of course, next Saturday, a week from today, we'll have it for you right here on FS1. Stetson, I know you're all into the, you're about to head there that way today. You've got to start practicing tomorrow. What are we going to find at Toledo Bend? You're going to see a lot of everything, but... Uh... March is coming quick on us, and, and Texas and Louisiana down there, those fish are getting ready to, uh, to move up. We should see a, a big weight event, and uh, I think you'll see a great turnout. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Time to get the season started. Lakes go up and down, trend up and down. I think we're, according to most folks who, who know, uh, this place is in an upward trend. Let's take a look at the Bassmaster Open last year yeah. at Toledo Bend running. Appreciate our guy Ben Milliken, rookie on the Elite Series this year, sending us this footage from his amazing week there. 75 plus pounds for three days of fishing. This was mid-April or early April, I believe. He was on pace for the Century Club if this was a four-day event. He wins it, goes to the Classic. He'll be at Grand Lake, and he's starting his Elite Series career next week on a place that he had a lot of success on. So be interesting, but... Uh, Man, we'll see some big ones for sure. The Century Club is an expectation now. It's interesting, Stetson, how these lakes go in cycles. You know, like sure. I, I don't know if you see it around Arkansas with certain lakes up and the lake nearby is down. Toledo for the longest time was the number one lake in, the, in America. And then it went on a little bit of a downturn. Sam Rayburn came to big, big expectations. And now it's flip-flopped yeah, and Toledo is back. It's coming back strong for sure. Grass, overgrowth, that should all be in the water. The man of the hour is still this man right here, Benton, Arkansas's Jeremiah Kendi. Started the day with the lead. <laughs> oh, no. Terrific start for <laughs> huh? Jeremiah, who did not Good yesterday man. have a fish at noon. He's certainly got some fish in the live well now. He is having a big, big day out there. That's bad news for the rest of these hopefuls. <laughs> Our other nine. That's literally the hook I just changed. And Jeremiah, he's no stranger to multi-day events. He actually fished on a pro circuit for 
several years and had some success out there. So, you know, he's not just one of these locals that just knows this lake well. Jeremiah knows how to make the big decisions at the biggest moments in the game. And uh, he's proven right here that he knows what to do and when to do it. And uh, he's, he's stretching that lead out. And he's had multiple, multiple wins on the FLW related circuits. For sure. In the past, yeah. Day one co-angler was the wife of his team partner, Ooh. Kevin Brown, who's fishing this as well. She called, she called uh, Jeremiah the goat of a watch talk. Wow, <laughs> absolutely. And I wouldn't argue that point at all. A couple other guys like Matt Baker, obviously in Arkansas, Quincy Houchin was tenth mm -hmm. after day one. He fell off a little bit. He weighed in a small mouth yesterday. Looked like oh, the way in. Yeah. Okay. They said it's a different ball game fishing your home lake in February without an Alabama rig because that's what they're so accustomed to at yep. home. <laughs> it changes the way you may fish it or you got to employ some other baits and uh, adjust to it a little bit. And no nets. You got to have no nets. I was just about to say I'm surprised that Baker struggling a little bit this morning and not kind of changing up a little quicker. I know it's hard to do, but looks like he made the, the switch and uh, right there. I'll take a, a wet hand. A really nice keeper to get him going. Looks like he's throwing a uh, he Booyah one knocker. Yep, that's what he's throwing right there. And uh, we one know that bait is. Hatch. Definitely, definitely a good bait here on Washita. I think we have a funny clip of Stetson giggling with a six, five or six pound Gunnersville bass on that same exact bait a few classics ago, ah. uh, just a, a few weeks from now. Yep. I remember that. That's right. I remember that very well. A fun moment and a fun classic there in the state of Alabama. We got things going on in Arkansas today, though. Out there on Lake Washita, some Arkansas performers doing very well today. Our SV spool design is made with one thing in mind casting control. Whether it is casting lightweight baits, skipping, pitching, or casting into the wind, the Tatula SV reels virtually eliminate backlashes when set properly. Now with our groundbreaking technology and innovations, backlashes can be a thing of the past. Out here, it takes a certain type. The type who's always the first one out. The type who knows deep down Everyone else is just fishing for second. Enter the Apex Series. See more fish. Seize more victories. Settle for nothing less. With unrivaled clarity, it's the top fish finder for the most demanding type of angler. Only from Hummingbird. Every day, we live to serve you. On the farm, our tires work as hard as you do, ensuring a bountiful harvest. We empower your discovery beneath the surface. We stand tall with you to conquer temple. We maximize efficiency in an interconnected world. We help you build the foundation of tomorrow. No matter the job, we know that your success is our success. Because at Maxim Tire, we get the job done. When you go rogue, you make your own fun. No matter what it looks like. Rogue Nicotine Pouches. Long lasting, great tasting. Go Rogue. Next weekend on FS1. The best anglers in the world compete at the highest level. It's the Bassmaster Elite Series. Live from Toledo Bend next Saturday and Sunday morning on FS1.
This is the St. Croix Bassmaster Open at Lake Washita, presented by Seven. Big, big day here. There's our fantastic host city, Maxim, making our live, Maxim Tires, making our live broadcast possible there. Legendary resort city of Hot Springs, Arkansas, going back into the 19th century. The thermal springs here have attracted people from all over the country and all over the world for such a long time. And of course, uh, the big attractions, water, still a big attraction here, especially in the form of the lakes, like Lake Washita. Also got Lake Hamilton right here in town, and Lake Catherine down below that. Fantastic boating and fishing opportunities. And it's a beautiful spot tucked into the Washita Mountains, one of the oldest mountain ranges in the country, older than the Rockies. Just took a view up Bathhouse Row there. Yeah, Bathhouse Row with the springs. And let's check in with Blake Schroeder from Texas. Blake from White House, Texas there. Close to Tyler and Lufkin. Not as big as I thought it was, but it's a better one. Two and a half, two pounder, two and a quarter. Starting to see some guys make some moves running around the lake a little more, trying to kind of make those adjustments that are necessary to get the win here on Championship Saturday. I don't know if y'all got to see the chance, but this is a new 2024 Skeeter. One of the new things come with it is these new live well pads. You know, if you're, you know, you cut foam noodles, keep your fish from bumping up on top of the live well or anything. Skeeter came out with these foam pads, man. They're the real deal. I highly recommend you getting your hands on some. Blake Schroeder, we're gonna head back over, I believe, in the direction of, uh, yeah, it looks like Andy Newcomb, angler from Missouri. I misspoke about Andy earlier. I said he had a 61st. He had a 19th. You don't have to go back on show it. I can go back. I want to get it straight. I, I got it mixed up. Just wanted to tell you, you know, he's having a great <laughs> year. <laughs> That's the one X factor with the Look, Andy Newcomb is the the rivers. We were wondering how many would go up the rivers. The fact that he's in the mm. South Fork, a little dirtier water, a little water to himself, shallower fishing. That's why he's got four or five different baits on the on the bet on the boat deck that have worked this week. Andy with uh, six pounds plus as it stands right now, and in third place, let's hear what he has to say about his day. Uh, we got three in the box. We got one halfway decent one, almost a three pounder. Um, pretty slow, but I kind of expected that. I'm, I've got ice in my guides the whole time, uh, and I've been fishing so deep you can't hardly or so shallow you can't hardly get the ice off your guides because your rod doesn't go all the way to the, <laughs> that far into the water. So um, it's slow as I expected, but uh, we're getting... But we're on the board. Well, let's get some of the action from Mr. Newcomb earlier today. Lake of the Ozarks area had a great finish last year in an open from, up there. From where Denny Brower, Camdenton, Missouri. That's right. I think we've seen him on Bass Live two days now, final day at Ozarks and today. Mm -hmm. I've seen him throw nine different lures because he was throwing a swim jig and a top water there in the Ozarks. He also went up the river um, where a lot of the guys, you know, went towards the dam or stayed on the main drag. That's off to him, you know. That we, we like guys with a lot of tools in their arsenal. Our leader, Jeremiah Kennedy's 45, Newcomb's 35, Logan Johnson's 34, and everybody else is in their 20s. Average age under 30 then, right? Would you say, Suge? Yeah. Yeah, with all the 20, 24 year olds, 22 year olds. That's phenomenal. 
it's very good to see that because you you kind of you know with with seems like there's a lot of negative spotlight on our industry but that just goes to show you right there that there are a lot of young anglers that still love the tournament fishing aspect of it what i grew up loving being able to go out there and compete for every bite that i could get learn new techniques learn new styles and be competitive at a high level it's really good to see those young kids coming up and dominating i don't know if you saw this last year we we had you know the youngest elite qualifier and trey mckinney did an article on the age of our nine guys who made it from the eqs to the elites it's 24.8 years old was the average age it's almost six years younger than the previous year yeah that's that's impressive and that just goes to show you that commitment and hard work no matter what your age can get you a long ways and uh, these kids are, that are coming up you know Trey Tucker those boys are, are very very good anglers he said father Gill, 21 I mean, yeah, year old there's a, and there's a lot more that that I don't know personally but making some strides for sure for instance somebody Looks like he's got one. All right, maybe it was grass he was getting free from. Joey Nania, 34 years old, but he's fishing his 14th year of the Opens because he started when he was 19. He's made a couple classics. He'll be in this year's classic, and he's able to make a living fishing in the Opens and and guiding at Logan Martin. But he is a part of our like when he was 14 in the state of Washington, winning like the Junior Series stuff, like a young young age. And so you see guys and you're like, Joey's been around forever. He has to be in his 40s. No, he's 34 because <laughs> the youth opportunities get these guys involved in, in front of our cameras and, and media team much earlier than they would have before. Like Trevor McKinney, the McKendry College Classic yeah. Bracket winner from a few years ago. He's been so close to making the Elite Series. He is, I've known him for a decade now. I, I met him when he was 15 in the high school series when he didn't want to talk on the microphone. And I did a sit down interview with him this week and he was like a natural. And so you just see these people progress over a decade. We've known Tucker Smith for six or seven years, and he just graduated um, from college. Yeah, you'd think he'd been out there <laughs> yeah. for, for 15 years, the, as much as he's accomplished. Oh, and even at the classic sets, and you're gonna have to worry about the youngest ever qualifier. and. Aaron Yavorsky. Yes, yeah, 17, he'll be 18 one week, week before yeah. the classic. That is, that is wild. I just remember back to when I was 17, 18 years old and the decisions that I made <laughs> on the water were, were nowhere near where I am now, just knowing what to do and when to do it. And a, and a kid coming along that young and making those decisions that pay off just goes to show you that uh, he's committed for sure. I feel like we're in that mid-morning funk, even though it's still just early. It's 9 a.m. local time, but we've been seeing Bass Track pop off with catches. It's seemingly guys back to back to back. This has been a little bit of a lull, and like you said, what did you say, after 10 o'clock? Yep. A lot of the moving baits or the lipless bite will pick back up, and so we'll, it'll be interesting to see the time of day, especially with Jeremiah starting our show saying, with the wind last night, a lot of these fish feed at night. If we had a you know a bright moon or something like that then these fish were active right at takeoff and may take a break before that midday portion to me it's it's 8 45 to 10 10 30 is is when you kind of see that lull on washita most days heard that a lot this week of guys saying they had a hint Kindy especially had a limited 847 on day one and went a couple hours, moved and called out almost everything. And we've had a we've had a severe front too. I mean it wasn't storms and rain severe, but a cold front that pushed through from I mean 70 degrees down to you know below freezing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those guys are still getting ice in their guides at this point of the morning. So Things, those fish can change a lot on that lake, even if it stays the same. But when you have these major fronts like this push through, it definitely can slow them down. I have to, I, since you corrected yourself, Tommy, I have to correct myself. Joey okay. Denny is not an old man. He's not 34. He's 32, but he's still been doing it for 14 years. So he started when he was 18 years old. So. <laughs> yeah, you owed him, you owed him a couple of years. Yeah, I think, I think he's in our, 
top top 20 or top 25 in the Opens EQ oh, points man. race, so we'll keep an eye on him as well. This is the second stop for the, the Opens, but uh, we've got a new, uh, we've got one series about to start uh, here in March 20th, 21st, the next event, Lake Tin Killer. Tahlequah, Oklahoma for the Yamaha Bassmaster Kayak Series. The Yamaha Brightwaters Bassmaster Kayak Series. You might uh, want to take a look at the, uh, what do you call that thing, Ronnie? The Tourney X, the scoreboard, the live scoreboard. No, no, oh, no. The, oh, check out the QR code. The QR the code. You yeah. want the QR code to learn more about the Kayak Series, certainly growing as we go through the years. Definitely of interest. You definitely want to check that out. The next generation of St. Croix Mojo Bass and Mojo Bass Glass deliver breakthrough levels of comfort and control. Based on anthropometric data, radical new Trigon handle and Dynamics real seat designs conform the rod to the angler, not the other way around. While 34 dialed-in casting and spinning models support cutting-edge presentations, from BFS to 8-ounce swim baits. So go ahead, find your Mojo, and unlock your bionic superpowers. You're here for the hook set and nothing else. Because the battle between you and the bass should always be front and center. And now that the best trolling motors ever made are even better, we'll lead the charge. So you can focus on getting them to bite whenever and wherever the fight takes you. With Minn Kota, you're free to fish on any front. Forged from the harshest environments, Dakota lithium batteries are built to endure. Engineered with lithium iron phosphate, they give you twice the runtime at half the weight, last five times longer, and provide exceptional lifetime value. Let's go! Backed by an 11-year warranty, they keep you on the water from sunup to sundown. Go further, last longer, play harder. When you go rogue, a top 20 playlist doesn't set the mood. You do. Rogue nicotine pouches. Great taste. No compromises. Go rogue. The biggest day in racing just got bigger as Grand Marshal Dwayne The Rock Johnson will kick off the Daytona 500. The Great American Race returns tomorrow, 2.30 Eastern, only on Fox. Big, big day. Maybe the biggest, of course, in NASCAR racing. Here's another look at the Mountain Tower there, Hot Springs, Arkansas, our fantastic host city and host organization. Visit Hot Springs, so thankful to them. 
for welcoming, welcoming us here, the Bassmasters, after more than two decades away. We take a look at our 10 anglers. Now they're distributed. 10 anglers left on championship Saturday. All but two of them in the EQ, elite qualification race, trying to amass points on that. That's how that stands right now. Paul mm. Marks out there fishing today. Easton Father Gill just missed it by one spot. Make it into the top 10 today. And there's Evan Cunn, whom we're watching right now, having a fantastic season. Ditto for Andy Newcomb, Joe Weiberg, Tucker Smith, Emil Wagner, Ish Monroe having a good tournament here to sort of make up for last, last time around at Okeechobee, Dakota Ebar and Clark Ream rounding out our top 10 in points. You got a good mixture there, young guys with Marks and Father Gill and Smith and Emil Wagner. And then you've got a good mix of either they've been pros or currently pros, Ishman Road, Dakota Ebert and Clark Ream. You've got a couple, like we've mentioned, Andy Newcomb and Joe Weiberg are Missouri anglers. Evan Kung being from Canada. It's a good, good group. As your tackle warehouse, Bassmaster EQ. Update there, elite qualifier update. It has been so great to, to have Bassmaster come back to uh, to Lake Washita. It's really it's, it's good. It's a unique fishery. It's a unique sort of challenge. And, and Stetson, I, I, you know, we went through a period with the elite series where a hometown angler could not get it done. You remember right. that? Oh, it's, yeah. it's kind of changed in the last few years or so. But why is why? I mean. I mean, Jeremiah is just knocking them dead out there today. It means a lot to have local knowledge here. It, it does, and this lake more than any, and I've said this for years, our lakes here in Arkansas can make you one of the best anglers in the world because the fisheries are so tough and they change and they're so diverse. And there's a lot of fish in our lakes, but and they don't get as much pressure, pressure as, say, like a Toledo Bend or a Lake Okeechobee, but... To me, there's something about them that they, they're just hard to catch them. Ronnie can tell you from the experience he's had, the fish are just challenging to catch. And one thing that you have that Jeremiah has going for him is years of experience, but years of experience knowing the right decisions to make at the right time. And I think that's a, a big key for his success this week. Stetson, I can't tell you how much we've enjoyed. I know you got to pack up to get finished yeah, back in the, the truck Toledo. and get yep. to Toledo Bend in a, yep. in a few minutes. We got you for a little while longer. Giant one, bro. Uh, we had a great, I just want to remember what a great week we had two weeks ago. The very first one fish at a time, uh, baby. Bassmaster no open monster, on Lake Okeechobee. And Scott Martin, the hometowner, getting it done. I think, and I think there was, it was less about local knowledge of spots because Okeechobee's changed so much for Scott Martin over his history. He's, he's caught fish where there's no more vegetation. He's caught fish where the bank is totally different. But I think for him, it's his local knowledge of patience, fishing in a crowd, knowing you're gonna be around a lot of boats. There's confined areas. And so his local knowledge wasn't on a spot. It was on the strategy within the spot and he gets it done. Breaks records left and right, three different records he took. What was it, the total weight for a three day a Bassmaster event, the winning margin and a single day biggest weight. Here they are right yeah, there. Yeah, there they go. Yeah, that was, uh, I don't, he ran out of records to break. I think I said that earlier. I, you know, this, this year represents a, a bigger commitment by the Bassmasters to the, uh, the, the St. Croix Bassmaster Opens. And uh, we were wondering how it would turn out. The first event turned out really great. I mean, an and absolute people, people barn don't burn. understand how challenging it is to catch them in those crowds on Lake oh, Okeechobee. Gosh, yeah. I've been in some of those situations. And when you're watching guys around you catch fish, for him to be able to stay focused on the task at hand, what he knows he needs to do to win and be able to pull that off in record-breaking fashion is uh, pretty impressive. Said he found his spot on the last hour of practice on Wednesday and actually first time he ever put an exclamation point on his waypoint. Wow. And then it was open on day one. He was boat 162, came in there, found it open. He was stealth mode. He didn't have his boat wrapped. and had his buff over his face, so he kind of snuck in there and caught him up. Looks like we're looking at Matt Baker there, I believe. It's, it's, you know, from a perspective of an angler that's fished a lot of days on this lake, it's easy for me to say this sitting here in this chair, but Matt, you know, changed up, went to the Booyah one knocker, catches his biggest fish of the day, and now you see him back out throwing a jerk bait. 
uh, there's a lot of decisions and things going through his head, and I understand that as an angler that that you know it's not as easy as we can make it look sitting right yeah. here in the studio, but. Uh, Kind of wondering why he's going back to that instead of sticking with that that mm -hmm. hard knocker, one knocker, whichever one he's throwing there. But uh, that bait, the Booyah one knocker, is known on Washita for getting big bites. And, and he, in my opinion, he's in a position, he's fishing this tournament to win. I feel like if he would stick with that bait, especially as we're rolling on, time goes on, that, that's, that bite's going to get better. It's kind of, kind of surprised to see him put that down so quick. And he could have just seen a fish that he wants to throw mm. at, so he may he may still be committed to it for a while, but we'll see how it plays out. Maybe in an area, you know, maybe he's the lipless is a when there's vegetation present, maybe the jerk baits right. when it's when it's smooth or when it's only timber and that's the subtleties as Jeremiah Kendi, our leader, is hooked up. Maybe keeper number oh, five, I on, believe. Buddy. Yes. Thank you. Again, not a big fish for Jeremiah there. I think that's, is that fish number five for him? I believe yeah. that is a limit five. for him. Yeah. Second limit of the day, Paul Marks is the other limit. It's not a, not a really big fish, but I'm telling you, it's better than average quality from what we've seen so far today from between him and the other guys. And it's just not even quite time yet for that bite to pick up. So I know he's excited. I know in his mind he, he feels like he's right on track to, to win this tournament. Well, Stetson, what was your estimation of the winning weight here? A guy asked me that. Actually, Colin, my, my teammate, asked me what I thought it would take to win. And I want to say I told him 47, 48 pounds. Oh, so. Wow. Yeah, yeah. We were looking at 17 a day would be really Yeah, strong. that's what it was. Yeah, it was 17 a day for me. As, and then when I saw the weights, I thought, whoa, maybe it's going to take more. But I'll tell you right now, he's going to catch some more fish, and he may win it by, you know, him or whoever may win it by over 47, 48 pounds. But I guarantee you it's going to be a tougher day overall. I, I just, I just mm -hmm. know the lake too well the conditions those boys are faced with today, it's going to be a lot tougher. Jeremiah had 19 plus on day one, 16 oh, plus on day two. Rope. Right in that right one. That right area. I want to let you know about something that's going on now. It's called the Bass Mast Her Initiative. You get it? Bass Mast Her. It's going to be trying to advance the sport of fishing, not just raise awareness, but advance the sport of fishing among female, females worldwide. Uh, hosted by Bassmaster staff, along with professional female anglers. They get to network with a community, help them develop skills, develop confidence on and off the water. These workshops that got set up, the, the, the subjects would be bass fishing fundamentals, uh, not seasonal patterns, rods and reels, uh, learning your way around a bass boat, very, very important. Uh, opportunity for women to learn about that, uh, casting, uh, uh, lure essentials, and all of that. It's a great, great opportunity. Those workshops coming up in Florida, Alabama, and the St. Lawrence River. You might want to check out the Bass Master Initiative. Casting and spinning models support cutting edge presentations from BFS to eight ounce swim baits. So go ahead, find your mojo and unlock your bionic superpowers. You're here for the hook set and nothing else because the battle between you and the bass should always be front and center. And now that the best trolling motors ever made are even better, we'll lead the charge so you can focus on getting them to bite whenever and wherever the fight takes you. With Minn Kota, you're free to fish on any front. 
forged from the harshest environments, Dakota lithium batteries are built to endure. Engineered with lithium iron phosphate, they give you twice the runtime at half the weight, last five times longer, and provide exceptional lifetime value. Let's go! Backed by an 11-year warranty, they keep you on the water from sunup to sundown. Go further, last longer, play harder. When you go rogue, a top 20 playlist doesn't set the mood. You do. Rogue nicotine pouches, great taste. No compromises. Go rogue. The St. Croix Bassmaster Open at Lake Washita, presented by Seven Reels, sponsored by Minn Kota, by Bass Pro Shops, and by Skeeter Boats. Final day here. Three days of competition started with almost 200 pros, 200 boats on Lake Washita, all 40,000 acres of it and now we're down to 10. The man with the lead to start the day, Jeremiah Kendi, has extended that lead in a big way. Started out with about a pound and a couple ounces and now he is, uh, well, he's been going to town this morning, and, which is remarkable in that he did not have any fish yesterday until noon. So uh, looking even more formidable at this point right now. And honestly, for him, he's got a, he's off to a good start with a three, almost a three and a half pounder, and then a bunch of fish in that two to two and a half range. So he's, he's absent of a five plus pounder. And if he does that, it's all going to be all but done. But now that he's got a limit, he has extended his lead out. And 47 nines, the baseline now. If you don't have anywhere near that, he's got a limit. He's only calling, but everybody's still working their way to five. Jeremiah from just down the road, Benton, Arkansas, Period. half an hour away. Maybe a little bit more than that way, but lots of experience here. Definitely one of the masters That's of this particular body of water. Challenge. Challenge. Knowing how to fish it through, it through the too, seasons, yeah. I guess, Stetson, is very important. It is, no doubt. Made a key adjustment on his bait, put some new hooks on there so he wouldn't have any dull hooks there from is. hitting all the rocks on the bottom and other things, and first cast after that able to land a keeper and so it seems like every he's staying calm not speeding himself up every decision is calculated and it's equated to another limit that's at minimum your job as an angler is to go out and catch fives right and then from there try to make them bigger if you can you're not Jeremiah not participating in the elite qualifiers program here this year so top points actually as far as EQ qualification will go to whoever finishes in second place so the race for second is, is a very important one too there we go. always it well and it's not very often that I get to sit here and and talk about two guys that I know so well that were in first and second coming into the final day uh, Jeremiah and Matt Baker Matt's another really good guy good friend of mine and uh, he's gonna make some he's gonna make some moves his day's not over I feel confident that he'll 
He'll make the right decision throughout the day and uh, he'll get some more good bites. Jeremiah's smallest fish at this point is a pound and 12 ounces. Yep, he's been weighing them and so he's got a 3.6, a 2.7, a 2.4, a two pounder and a one, one and three quarter or so. <laughs> and so far that 3.6 is oh, the biggest bass of the day. Oh. Yep, that's, that's kind of part of our game. I got you. You notice he's kind of getting, this doesn't look the same as what he's been fishing. I, I think now he's kind of changing, changing up what he's doing. He's trying to find that, that bigger quality fish. Oh God, that's a good. Boom. It's gonna make a call. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's getting closer to what we're looking for right there. They get in the guts of these pockets, it's gonna be ugly. Well, notice, notice where he was. Yep, you see that rock? You see that gut? Yep. Stephanie That's told me deal. yesterday he's gonna go strictly to fish places today where he thinks the females are gonna set up. Right. And you just heard him mention the guts of the pockets with a little oh. rock on it. He was in here. That's what I was talking about oh, earlier. Sure. Those little ditches, here. those little drains, those Call little that. washouts with, yeah. with a little bit of rock, I a little like bit that. of grass mixed right. in. I want that off. <laughs> and he knows now, where they are. No question. Sure, because it was so rough. You know. Looks like another three pounder for sure. Yeah, now I got a probably two that are three pounds and up. Which would mean he has the biggest ba bass of the day and here. the second biggest bass of the day. <laughs> that way the boat will be still. I can't. You notice how many rods he has on his deck, Stetson? I bet you. Yeah, he's uh, he's committed. That. I'll tell you that. He knows he knows what he's going to do. He I knows what it's going to take to win. This thing. So, what he's doing right now is he's pulling up on the bank so the boat will be still, so he can weigh his fish and get you know get, either balance them or weigh them. I assume he's going to weigh them just so he can get a good idea of what he's got and which one he needs to call. That way, I'll get accurate readings on all these. There you go. So I see I got a 174. I can go ahead and call it out. It's nowhere close to my other ones, but then I'm gonna reweigh all my other ones. And that's number two. There's a 174. Three fourteen. Two ninety nine. Three pounds even. Get rid of number two. thinking towards that 2020, 20, 25 uh, world championship. We'll have to ask him yes, he is. about Ray Roberts. Yeah. But first, yeah. because he's not signed up for him yet, if he wins today, he better take some of that winnings, sign up for Logan Martin and you fall Oklahoma, and then we can talk classic. Until, until he's in it. Until another. he's in it. Get yeah. on the list. Get on the waiting yeah. list. Yeah. 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 Until, until he's in. Good stuff from our anglers today here. All 10 of them out there working so hard on Lake Washita. Trying to... Crack the code out there. Jeremiah Kendi kind of had the code in his head, it seems like, Stephanie. Yes, he did. And they're, they're, this, this day's not over. You're going to see some of those guys from down the pack catch some good quality fish. Another 10-pounder could be at hand. Uh, Matt Baker, he's kind of he's sitting back there just waiting on a big bite or two. So 
A lot of fishing left today, guys. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We'll have more coverage for you. Stetson Blaylock, can't thank you enough for being here. And Glad you're to be out here. the door heading to Toledo Bend to fish to win on the Bassmaster Elite Series. We wish right. you the best of luck. Coverage continues at 1130 exactly. Eastern Time on Bassmaster.com. We will see you here on FS1 a week from today at Toledo Bend.